everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is d -Lo and I've got another awesome video for you today. And I say awesome again, because this is the second of this magical series called The Fan Casting Summon. I say magical because it is the first ever mass gathering of the greatest fan casters on Instagram to come together for the sole purpose of casting the, the MCU's Fox characters and otherwise. So we're starting with Fox characters. This is the second iteration. We've already done the X-Men, but I wanted to let you guys know that we're doing the Fantastic Four and a few associated Fox related characters as well on this fan casting today. This video is going to be huge. So make sure you get your popcorn, <laughs> you get your soda. Um, I've never done a video this big before. We're getting ready to tackle this thing. So you guys buckle up, um, get comfortable and enjoy this ride and make sure to uh, let others know that this is happening. Get ready to be joining me in the comments and let me know what you guys think about these selections down below. I'm super excited. We've got a great cast of awesome fan casters today joining us. I believe we have uh, 25 or 26. We've got a lot of a lot of fan casters in here and if that's depending on if you wanna include me or not. <laughs> I'm not really a fan caster, but we are now. So let's get going. You guys ready for this? Fan casting summit number two, fan casting the MCU's Fantastic Four. So let's get going. All right. So, first up on the fan casting summit, I would like to present to you guys fan casting summit number two, fan casting the MCU Fantastic Four. I'm going to be zipping through this because there's a lot to present today. This is amazing how fast this grew. Um, the last video we did had something like over just over like a hundred and uh, like I think it was 40 slides or something like that. This one is really big. You guys basically double that. So um, I want you guys to hit me up in the in the comment section in the live chat. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Let's jump right into this. All right. So first up, we have Nerds United. Welcome back, Nerds United, to the Fan Casting Summit. We have actor number one for Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic, Patrick Wilson from Aquaman and Watchmen. Also second choice, Timothy Oliphant from Hitman and I Am Number Four. These are really good choices. Gosh, when I saw Aquaman, I was so impressed by uh, Patrick Wilson's uh, performance. And I, I know that there's a lot of uh, fan casting images of him out there already. I really like him. He's my pick. Um, but if you guys like Timmy Oliphant better, let me know down below. Let's keep moving. Next up, we have Catherine Winnick for Susan Storm and then Emily Blunt as well. Now, I've said this multiple times. Emily Blunt paired with John Krasinski is a great option. But I do think that Catherine Winnick is hard to beat. I think she would be the ideal choice for um for susan storm if you can't get say like elizabeth banks let's keep moving let me know what you think down below johnny storm the human torch we have jake lacy from the office and rampage and we also have daniel Sharman from teen wolf and the fear of the walking dead or fear the walking dead um if i got to pick between these two guys i personally want an older fantastic four so i would probably go jake lacy but i think daniel Sharman's a great choice next up we have ben grim the thing Actor number one by Nerds United is Vince Vaughn from Brawl and Cell Block 99 and Lost World uh, Jurassic Park. And then David Harbour as well. So David Harbour was one of my top picks. Uh, I believe he was my top pick for Beast in the X-Men. And also someone, if not Nerds United, someone had, uh, I think it was Reimagined Fancast, had presented Vince Vaughn as Beast in the MCU. I really like him as Beast. Um, so, and I do like him as Ben Grimm too, but I think I would go David Harbour for this one. So I'm going to keep moving. Next up, we have Daniel Wu for Namor, Mackenzie the Submariner, and then also Will Yun Lee um, from The Wolverine and Elektra. Um, I like both of these actors. I really do. Although I will say Will Yun Lee looks very, very much like Namor. So for that reason and that reason alone, I'm going to go with Will Yun Lee. Let me know what you think down below. We have next Victor Von Doom, Michael or Mitchell Huisman from Game of Thrones and Age of Adeline, and then Michael Shannon, Man of Steel and The Shape of Water. I'm gonna go with Michael Shannon for this one because just his eyes are so piercing and he presents such ferocity. Like when he did The Man of Steel when he played Zod, um, I will find him! <laughs> that was just so intense, it was so great. I really like Michael Shannon. I'm gonna go Michael Shannon on this one. Next up we have for Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer, Rupert Friend from Homeland and Agent 47, and we also have Demore Barnes from 12 Monkeys and American Gods. 
based purely, you guys know I'm very aesthetic. I like I like to make sure that it looks very much like the, the comics and everything looks closest to accurate. I don't think either of these guys particularly look like Silver Surfer, but I will say Rupert Friend looks much more to me like the Silver Surfer based on just like bone structure, his nose. Um, I, I think that he's got the, the jaw, like the mouth and everything. They're both very close, but I would say that I would probably go Rupert Friend. You guys let me know if you think differently down below. Uh, both are great actors. Now, uh, Galactus, the Devourer of Worlds. Now, for this one, probably most likely going to be um, either like motion capture CGI and uh, and voice acting or purely voice acting with CGI, no motion capture. You gotta do something in that realm. Galactus is the mighty one. I would like to see some sort of motion capture involved. I really have enjoyed the way that Marvel's done that and brought that to life. With the Hulk and with the Hulk Buster and with like a lot of different things they've been able to do very successfully. I would say that Michael Ironside from X-Men First Class is a cool choice, but I would go Colin Salmon. I really enjoy his voice. It's very deep and soothing at the same time, but I think you would want someone with that kind of stoicness, like I am all powerful type of thing for, for Galactus. Um, and I, Michael Ironside typically does really rough. And I think rough can work definitely, but I would go Colin Salmon. Next up. I wanna go over the lists. So I broke this into the top two teams based on t actor one, actor two. So let's go down the line. For team one, for Nerds, uh, for Nerds United, I'm sorry I didn't change the um, the name on the on the top right up here. It says Dream Fancast, that's not true. It's actually uh, underscore nerds.united underscore. But here we go. Mr. Fantastic, Patrick Wilson, Catherine Winnick, Jake Lacey, Vince Vaughn, Daniel Wu, Michael Kreisman, my, uh Rupert Friend, and Michael Ironside. And for the next, uh, we have Timothy Oliphant, Emily Blunt, Daniel Sharman, David Harbour, Will Yun Lee, Michael Shannon, Demar Barnes, and Colin Salmon. This one's really tough. I'm, I'm kind of split down the middle here, but um, just because of Patrick Wilson, Catherine Winnick, Winnick, Vince Vaughn, Jake Lacey, I really enjoyed them. Um, and so for that reason, uh, basically, I'm going to pick team one. All right, next up, uh, uh, World of Fan Casts. Welcome back to the summit, my friend. We have... Uh, first up for Reed Richards, Brandon Routh from Superman Returns and DC's Legend of Tomorrow's. And then we also have Michael Rosenbaum from Smallville and Guardians of the Galaxy 2. You might not remember him from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but Michael Rosenbaum played Martin X next to Stakar, who was the uh, one of the original members of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Not the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, but the books, the comics. And so I do think that Brandon Routh would do really well um, as Reed Richards, he plays the Atom in uh, DC's Legend of Tomorrow, which is very close, very similar. However, uh, Michael Rosenbaum is a really outside the box choice for Reed Richards. I actually had him on my list for Silver Surfer, but um, I think that this is really good as well. I'm pretty sure that he could play that role. Um, I'll probably go Brandon Routh for this one, but I do love that you chose Michael Rosenbaum. That speaks to me. I love that. So let's keep moving. Next up, we have Invisible Woman, Rose Byrne from X-Men First Class, and then Rosamund Pike, um, Gone Girl, and Jack Reacher. Um, I think that between the two of these, I would probably go with Rosamund Pike. She looks a lot more accurate. In fact, she looks very much like the comics um, already. You don't, you wouldn't have to do anything to change that really. So I would go with Rosamund Pike, uh, except for maybe blue the eyes a little bit, but that's you know a small detail that could be very easily fixed. Anyway, that's my choice. Next up, we have Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. We've got Tyler Posey, Teen Wolf, and Truth or Dare, and we also have Ross Lynch from Austin and Alley and The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I like both of these. Um, I think that Tyler Posey probably has more of the uh, the attitude that I would want for it. I like if you see him in interviews. Both of them are very similar, fun-loving dudes, um, just kind of casually going through life, building their career, blah, blah, blah. But I will say that I think Ross Lynch looks more the part. Um, I'm gonna go with Ross Lynch. I think I'm gonna go with Ross Lynch for this one. You guys let me know which one you guys like down below. Also, um, for Ben Grimm, Terry Crews comes up again. I really love Terry Crews. He was in Deadpool 2, by the way, so that's a Fox Marvel um, uh, film. He's also in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I absolutely love this guy. I think that he would play the, the, perfect, the perfect person, personality-wise, um, build-wise. I think that you could totally get Terry Crews in there. Army Hammer was my number one pick for Cyclops, and uh, he's from the Man of, from Uncle and, and the Lone Ranger. I'm going Terry Crews on this one. I think that Terry Crews is your guy. Although I will say, Army Hammer's huge, 
and he's got those eyes. But I do think that personality wise, I would rather have Terry Crews in this role. So I'm choosing Terry. Terry loves yogurt. <laughs> Next up, we got Namor McKenzie. Brian T comes up um, from the Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, The Wolverine. Incredible. Love the, love the guy. He looks very much like him. Boss Logic did an epic art, which I'm going to show you guys um, uh, a little bit later. I did, I did something very special for you guys towards the end. Daniel Day Kim as well. Lost. And Hawaii 5 uh, I've loved this guy. When I saw him on Lost, I said I said to my wife, we were watching it together, I was like, babe, that guy could play Namor. I really think that this guy has what it takes. Um, just that like frustrated, like domineering kind of machismo, um, like when he was when he was there on the beach with his wife and blah blah blah. I was just saying, like, dude, he's got it. Like he's he's Namor. He looks like Namor, he can act like Namor. Um, I would I would I don't know if he um, would do well as far as like um, maybe say portraying some compassion for his own people i haven't seen that much out of this guy yet but i love i love the guy so i'm picking him just because but brian t is also great uh by a slim margin i'm picking daniel day kim anyway let's keep moving next up uh dr doom gustav skarsgård from vikings and westworld incredible actor um he played uh what was it again was it he played Loki, right? Loki in uh, in Vikings, not in Marvel, but in in Vikings. Uh, if I'm remembering his name correctly, or was it Lofi or Low Low? I don't remember what it was. But Timothy Oliphant, Hitman, and I am number four. I really like these guys. But for Doctor Doom, I think I might go. This is tough. You know what? I'm going Timothy. I'm going Timothy Oliphant. But I really like that you pulled out Gustav Skarsgård. And if you guys have seen those shows, you know he's no joke. He's a serious actor. And he would be really cool for this role. I just think Timothy Oliphant probably looks a little closer to what I'm picturing in my head. So anyway, that's what I choose right there. Next up, Norn Rad the Silver Surfer. We got Oscar Isaac from Star Wars The Force Awakens. And also X-Men Apocalypse magnificent actor i loved i loved him he was the best part in my opinion of the force awakens i really liked the force awakens didn't like the last jedi but i really liked the force awakens a lot and i think that a big part of that was oscar isaac and him playing poe dameron from beginning to end being just the savage he was like the image of what you want to be if you're going to be part of the rebellion or uh, rather the uh, resistance and so with uh next after that we have lakeith stanfield from atlanta and get out uh, funny talented actor, but I will say that if I had to pick between the two of these guys I think I'm going Oscar Isaac. I really like him. So um, just because he's a favorite of mine So anyway, that's what I choose next up. We have Galactus devourer of worlds. We have Sean Bean Why not use this ring? <laughs> Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones uh, Awesome actor. I really like him. He was one of my top picks for Magneto um, and also Keith David the Princess and the Frog and Gargoyles. This guy's an, an amazing vocal actor. Again, like I said, um, whether you do uh, like the actual facial representation of the actor to the live live uh, or the CGI motion capture, if you translate that, doesn't matter. Um, but Sean Bean looks like his like this part, his nose, mouth looks like Galactus, and Keith David would sound very perfect in the role of Galactus tough for me to say i think i'm gonna just because i love him so much i think i'm going sean bean um but seriously keith david is is no joke and that close so close next uh let me just go back next up we, for world of fan cast let me go over the team for you guys first team michael Ro uh for, <laughs> sorry i typo again first up brandon ralph rose Byrne, tyler posey terry cruz brian t gustav skarsgård oscar isaac and sean bean the second team is Michael Rosenbaum, Rosamund Pike, Ross Lynch, Army Hammer, Daniel Day Kim, Timothy Oliphant, Lake, uh, Lake Keith, Stanfield, and Keith David. For this one, I'm going team one. I think all across, I think most most way across the board, I, I think I like team one enough that it's, it's my pick. So you guys let me know what you like down below. Next up, fan cast forever. Awesome, welcome to the summit. You are here. We are welcome. Thank you. And awesome, awesome choices here. We got Ben Lawson from Designated Survivor and The Deep End. My wife watches Designated Survivor. I poke in from time to time. I don't really um, watch that one myself, but my wife loves it. And I've seen Ben Lawson in like in moments and stuff. I really like the guy. I think he's great. And he looks the part. That's important to me. So I, I like that he looks the part. He could do a good job, uh, no doubt. And then also, clearly a fan favorite, John Krasinski. Again, Boss Logic did art for him. 
um, the the office a quiet place just I think he'd be perfect and if you pair him with his actual real-world wife Emily Blunt as as Reed and Sue you got a good setup so that's what I think I'm, I'm probably going with um, I'm, I'm probably going with John but I really like the other guy too Susan Storm Invisible Woman, Allison Williams from Girls and Get Out, and then we also have Emily Blunt from Edge of Tomorrow and A Quiet Place. Now, I really like Allison Williams for this one. I think I'm going with her. She looks the part down to a T. Emily Blunt looks close, but Allison Williams definitely looks like comic book Susan Storm. It's, it's just, it's great. I love it. So next up, um, Johnny Storm, The Human Torch, Jacob Elordi from The Kissing Booth and Swinging Safari, and then also Sam Claflin from Adrift and The Hunger Games. I'm going Sam Claflin. I really like Sam Claflin. I haven't seen Jacob Elordi in much, and so um, I'm gonna go with him because I know he's a great actor. I know he's got the personality. I know he's got the looks. He's a full package, so I think he'd be great in Johnny Storm. Next up, we've got Ben Grimm, The Thing, Charlie Weber uh, from Jarhead 3 and The Siege, Vampires Suck. Then we also have David Harbour from Stranger Things and Hellboy 2019. It's hard for me to look past David Harbour in this role. I love David Harbour for this role, but Charlie Weber is a great choice. Um, for these two, I don't know, man. I think I might go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Charlie Weber because he's, I think he's rougher and tougher so far. But I love David Harbour. You, you guys already know he's he's one of my top picks already. He was on my list. Charlie Weaver, Weaver was not, but I appreciate this unique casting. So that's great. Next up, we have Conrad Ricamora uh, from How to Get Away with Murder and The Light of the Moon. And then we also have Luke Evans um, from The Hobbit and uh, Beauty and the Beast. I'm going to go back so you guys can see this. Conrad Ricamora, to me, doesn't look at all like Namor. He's really thin um, and he doesn't. He doesn't have the eyebrows. He doesn't have the hairline. Um, he doesn't have particularly sharp features either. So I don't think that visually he has what it would take to give that powerful on-screen presence that you would need for Namor. Luke Evans does. Luke Evans is freaking gassed on. So I'm going with Luke Evans. Ne uh, but I do appreciate the casting. Next up, John Hamm from Baby Driver and Mad Men for Doctor Doom. Oh my gosh, is that sweet, that's so good. And then Michael Fassbender from Assassin's Creed and X-Men Days of Future Past. Guys, I can't tell you how much I, I am torn between these two. John Hamm as, as Mr. Fantastic is a great idea. So if you're gonna have him as Mr. Fantastic, then yeah, put put Fassbender as Doom and you're, you're gonna win no matter what. Either of these guys are great, but I think I'm gonna go with I think I'm gonna go with Fastbender for Doom because I would prefer to have John Hamm as Mr. Fantastic. So that's why I picked that. Next up, we have Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer. Actor number one, LaMonica Garrett. Designated Survivor, Transformers Dark of the Moon. We also have Alexander Skarsgård from True Blood and The Legend of Tarzan. Now I will say, I do think that LaMonica Garrett looks a lot like the Silver Surfer. But I will say, I think that Alexander Skarsgård has that, that length, that size. A lot of surfers are, are very you know like very tall uh they've got that kind of longer body they're built but they're they're longer you know and so i think that um just because i'm trying to picture him whenever i picture the silver surfer it sounds weird but you got to kind of picture him basically like you see in that picture basically in a bodysuit um or or like chrome no like no <laughs> like uh body you know like reproductive organs so you got uh, you I would, I would basically pick Alexander Skarsgård because I think he looks the part visually in his face. Um, the eyes, they kind of sink in a little bit around here to give that like same shape you see there. Um, he's got a uh, chiseled, like, chiseled jaw and everything. So does LaMonica Garrett, of course. But I think that the shape is what I'm looking at, like that, that shape, the long, narrow head. And so that's, that's why I pick him. So next up, Galactus, Devourer of Worlds. We have Bruce Willis from Die Hard and Glass. And we have Christoph Waltz from 007 Spectre and Django Unchained. I love Bruce Willis, but I am definitely, definitely going Christoph Waltz for this one. I think that he would be great um, as Galactus. So let's keep moving. Now, to go over the list, FanCast Forever, you have for Team 1, Ben Lawson, Allison Williams, Jacob Elordi, Charlie Weaver, Conrad Ricamora, John Hamm, uh, LaMonica Garrett, and Bruce Willis. For team two, we have John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Sam Claflin, David Harbour, Luke Evans, Michael Fassbender, Alexander Skarsgård, and Christoph Waltz. I love a lot of the choices from team one, but this one for me is a no-brainer. I have to go team two. 
I just, I love every single person on that list. So let's keep moving. Next up, FanCast Power, FanCast underscore power. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. This casting rocks. John Hamm, Baby Driver, Madman. We just talked about this as Reed Richards, I think is a amazing choice. And after that, we have Joseph Gordon-Levitt from The Dark Knight Rises and Inception. A lot of people have been talking about him being Reed Richards, but I don't see it visually. I know in my head that he plays the role perfectly. I know it, I, 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 I see that in my mind's eye, but I can't visualize the appearance as Reed Richards. I, I, for some reason, I just can't. So John Hamm is my pick there. Next up, we have Charlize Theron, or Charlize Theron, I don't know how you say it, but Atomic Blonde, Mad Max, Fury Road, great great casting and i love that she's a little bit older but she still looks very like pretty and youthful i i, I would i love this i love this so much and then the next choice is amelia clark um to me she looks a lot younger a lot younger um and solo a star wars story and game of thrones i know she is younger but great actress although i do think that i'm definitely going charlie's throne with not a second thought next up andrew garfield hacksaw ridge and the amazing spider-man for johnny storm the human torch and Dylan O'Brien from Bumblebee and the Maze Runner. You guys know I love Andrew Garfield. Love his Spider-Man. Love his Peter Parker. I loved him so much. And I want to see him in the MCU. However, um, even though I do think he'd make a good Johnny Storm, I think that Dylan O'Brien would be a better one. So I'm going Dylan O'Brien. Next up, we have Ben Grimm the Thing, Joel Egerton from Bright and Warrior. And then we also have David Harbour, Stranger Things, and Hellboy. Now, um, Joel Egerton was and and David Harbour were on my list for Beast. I've said this already. It's tough. It's tough, guys. I think both of them are actually literally perfect for this role. David Harbour, I think, I think his head shape looks a little bit better for the role though. So I'm going with David Harbour. Slim margin, seriously, both of them perfect. You guys have to. You guys should let me know down in the comments who's better because I'm stuck. Like I'm totally stuck. Uh, I'm making a decision because I have to. Next up, we have Namor, Brian T, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift, and Wolverine, and then also Luke Evans. Um, both of these guys are coming up a lot. I really uh, appreciate both of these guys, but I do think that the Namor that I, I kind of grew up seeing um, looks a little bit closer to Luke Evans. Luke Evans has um, sort of like, almost like if he was a half Asian, half Asian, half white guy, where his eyes are a little bit squinted almost all the time. And he has that look. He's got kind of the peaked eyebrows where they come up on the point. Um, he has the widow's peak, which is something that Brian T does not have. His head shape is kind of like this, like bumpy kind of. Uh, it's 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 not Namor's hairstyle. And for me, the less you have to augment, the better that it it keeps me in the reality of what we're seeing. So I'm going Luke Evans. Next up, Mads Mikkelsen for Victor Von Doom. Dr. Doom, I look, I look, I love Mads Mikkelsen and I want him to play Dr. Doom. If we can just all pretend he didn't play Kaecilius in Dr. Strange, then yes, I want him to play Dr. Doom. But he is in the MCU. Also, Jude Law. Jude Law would be great in this as well, but he's also in Captain Marvel. So both of these castings are already in the MCU. Because of that, that frees me up to choose my favorite choice, Mads Mikkelsen. So thank you, Fancast Power, for letting me choose Mads Mikkelsen between the two of these options. Because I really, really like Mads Mikkelsen as Doctor Doom. Next up, we have uh, Alexander Skarsgård for Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer from True Blood, Legend of Tarzan. We also have Eddie Redmayne from Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and then Les Miserables. I think that both of these guys are really good, but I do also really appreciate how freaking built Alexander Skarsgård is. So I think I'm going Alexander Skarsgård, but Eddie Redmayne is a great choice. And I think he'd do really well, specifically playing Norrin Rad. More so than the Silver Surfer, playing Norrin Rad would be uh, where I think he would shine. Next up, um, Galactus, the Devourer of Worlds. You have Javier Bardem from uh, 007 Skyfall and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tale. And then also Liam Neeson from Batman Begins and the Chronicles of Narnia. I really like both of these guys. Um, I think that I it's it's tough. It's kind of just a matter of just personal preference. Whose voice do you like better? I think if you're gonna put, put the actual face of the actor into the face and the mask of, of Galactus for the CGI and all that stuff, 
kind of how they put like they mel melded Josh Brolin with Thanos to make that Thanos face. If you're gonna do that, I would like to see Liam Neeson's face behind that. And then I could I could be like, okay, yeah, I can see that. It looks like the comics, yes. So I'm gonna go to Liam Neeson just because if that's the possibility, I would like that. Next up, let's go over the list. So Fancast Power chooses for team one, John Hamm, Charlize Theron, Andrew Garfield, Joel Egerton, Brian T, Mads Mikkelsen, Alexander Skarsgård, and Javier Bardem. For team two, we have Joe Gordon Levitt, Amelia Clark, Dylan O'Brien, David Harbour, Luke Evans, Jude Law, Eddie Redmayne, and Liam Neeson. This one, like, it breaks my heart because I like the I like the first two of, of team one, the second two, like the second set of two for team two, and then the next, uh, like the next one, you know, for Namor this side, for uh, Doom this side, and it's kind of back and forth. Very split, I love both of these. I'm going team one because you gotta have a solid, uh, or actual Fantastic Four. It can't just be solid villains, it's gotta be Fantastic Four. So John Hamm, Charlize Theron, Andrew Garfield, Joel Egerton would knock it out of the park. I think that's great. Next up, we have Dream Fancast. Uh, and I am super excited. Welcome back, Dream Fancast, to the Fancasting Summit. First up, we have John Cho from Star Trek Beyond and Searching. A lot of people have been picking uh, this guy online. I've seen fan castings of him for Namor, but this is one of the, the surprising ones that really got me excited because I do think that he would do a really good job playing Reed Richards. He doesn't look like Reed Richards at all, at all, but I will say that I think that he would do a good job nonetheless. Um, and then the second option is Ewan McGregor, who does look a bit like, not a lot, but a bit like uh, Reed Richards and could certainly play the role. I, I really love Ewan McGregor, huge fan. I'm choosing Ewan McGregor. Next up, we have Catherine Winnick for Susan Storm uh, from Vikings Dark Tower, Vikings and the Dark Tower. And then we also have Yvonne Strahovski from The Predator and Chuck. Both of these ladies would be excellent, but you, you'll be hard pressed to find a chick that I think is more perfect for this role than Catherine Winnick. It's Catherine Winnick. Next up, uh, and let me know if you disagree. I'm, <laughs> I want to know. That's why we're doing this. So, um, Johnny Storm, The Human Torch, Ansel Elgort, Baby Driver, The Fault in Our Stars, and Harry Styles from Dunkirk and One Direction, This Is Us. Now, I really, I, I really like Ansel Elgort, and I think that uh, him, him being like, uh, especially when he's blonde, he looks the part, and I think that would be fantastic. I think it'd be great. Um, but I do really like uh, the out of the box thinking going Harry Styles. That's really unique. Um, you know, One Direction, he proved with the movie This Is Us that he does have some acting ability to a degree. Uh, and then Dunkirk is where he actually got a real acting role. And he was able to prove to everybody he can act. So that I think is really cool. It would be really nice to see him in that role. I think he's got a great personality for this. But so does Ansel Elgort. And because Ansel Elgort has the history, he's got more under his belt as an actor. I'm going Ansel. But I do think Harry is a great idea. Next up. Ben Graham, The Thing, Ross Marquand, the, the Walking Dead, Avengers Infinity War. In case you guys don't know who Mar uh, Ross Marquand is in Infinity War, he plays a character that is unrecognizable. You, you would not know who he is in Infinity War ever. Like, you'd have to Google it. Um, and that's a good thing because then you could repurpose him and put him in a different role, which would be great. Although, I don't know about, about Ross Marquand for The Thing. I don't know if he would be good in that role. I like what they did with him in Infinity War. It's a spoiler, so I can't really say what it is right now, just in case. I'll wait on that. But Liev Schreiber, definitely. From Wolverine Origins, he played Sabretooth and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I don't know if it's a spoiler. I haven't seen it yet, but I know a lot about the film because I've got people that have seen it already. I'm not going to say who he plays, but he plays someone with a, with a deep macho voice. Um, and I, yeah, I think he'd be great in this role. So I'm going Liev Schreiber. Next up, Brian T from The Wolverine, Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, and then Tyler Hoechlin, Teen Wolf, and Supergirl. If it's my choice, hands down, no, no doubt in my mind, Tyler Hoechlin, Namor the Submariner. He looks so good in this role. He's on my list. He's one of my top picks for Namor. Um, and I think he's being wasted, wasted on Supergirl. Uh, his Superman on there sucks, and it's not his fault. They're writing Superman to be like lifting up Supergirl. Like he just always shows up. He gets like mind controlled somehow uh, or hypnotized. And then he has to fight Supergirl. And then he like snaps out of him. He's like, no, you beat me. You were at full strength. Yeah, I was at full strength. So now you're the champion of Earth. It's like, no, you're not. But Superman, so it's freaking Superman. So anyway, he's getting wasted over there in, in CW. So Tyler Hoechlin, if you see this, 
you come over to the light side, you come over to Marvel, they're gonna treat you right. They're gonna give you Namor and you're gonna get lots and lots of movies. It's gonna be good. <laughs> you, you should do that. So I choose, I choose Tyler Hoechlin. Next up, uh, Victor Von Doom. We got Michael Fassbender again and Adam Driver from The Force Awakens and Black Klansman. Um, I think that if you're gonna go younger, Adam Driver, he looks younger. I think they're close close to the same age, like within six or something years. I don't remember what it is, but uh, they're not too far apart. But younger, I would go Adam Driver. But I don't want a younger uh, Doctor Doom. I want an older Doctor Doom. So because of that, both of these guys, I think, would kill it. And you've already, we basically already saw like an offshoot of an offshoot of Doctor Doom. Darth Vader was an offshoot of Doctor Doom. Kylo Ren is an offshoot of Darth Vader. Both operating under a mask, they've got lots of problems, but you know, they, they believe themselves to be of a righteous cause, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I think that Michael Fassbender is your guy. I choose Michael, that's what I choose. And again, another X-Men uh, actor, we have James McAvoy for Norrin Rad, which I think is probably one of the best castings that I never thought of. <laughs> I think that this is like amazing. Uh, I can't believe I didn't see that. Anyway, uh, uh, Ryan Gosling uh, from First Man and La La Land. Um, I, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Ryan Gosling. I don't know what it is. I think that he's good. I don't think he's great. I think he's good at singing. I think he's good at dancing. And I do think he's good at acting. I just don't think he's great. He's not like outstanding to me. And I don't think he would be good in the role of Silver Surfer. I think James McAvoy would kill it. So I'm going James. Let me know if I'm crazy. Let me know if, if my opinion there sucks. <laughs> You're more than welcome to do so. Um, anyway, Galactus, John Noble uh, from The Lord of the Rings Return of the King. He played the father of uh, Boromir and Faramir. He was the steward of Gondor in Return of the King. And then also Kevin Conroy. If you don't know who he is, he's Batman in literally everything you grew up with. So basically, not all, but basically every single animated Batman everything he was the voice of and including the video games. So if you guys played like any of the Batman Arkham games or you watch Justice League, the animated series, that's him. So he, or the killing joke, he was Batman. So they got Kevin Conroy for that. Uh, and so if you wanna, if you wanna hear him talk like this, Galactus, the destroyer of worlds, it's going to sound a lot like that. I think it'd be good. I think that's great. But I, I think, you know, as much as I love Kevin Conroy, I think I'm my no you know what I am going Kevin Conroy because look at his nose he's got basically the same nose as the Galactus in that picture and I'm okay with that so uh, although John Noble is a great choice I love John Noble in that so either way is fine next up we have uh, Mr. Fantastic we got for team one John Cho then Catherine Winnick Ansel Elgort Ross Marquand Brian T Michael Fassbender James McAvoy and John Noble uh, for the second list, we have Ewan McGregor, Yvonne Strahovski, Harry Styles, Liev Schreiber, Tyler Hoechlin, Adam Driver, Ryan Gosling, Kevin Conroy. So I think for the last, mm, this is tough. I'm gonna go with, and it kind of breaks my heart because some of my favorites are on the right, but I like, I'm gonna go team one on this one. Yeah, I'm going team one. I can't say no to Catherine Winnick and Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy and John Noble and Ansel Elgort, I can't do that. So I, I gotta choose them. Next up, we have Fan Casting is Dope! And you're absolutely right, welcome to the Fan Casting Summit, Fan Casting is Dope. You're the man and I love that name. So next up we have John Krasinski from, for Reed Richards, A Quiet Place, we know this one, great choice. Patrick Wilson, again, I love this choice. I think if I had to choose between the two, and the set and like if you're gonna go with a slightly younger um, Reed Richards, John Krasinski is your guy. And I said this once, I've said it a thousand times. I want a slightly older Fantastic Four. So I'm going to choose Patrick Wilson here. Next up, we have Emily Blunt. Uh, and if you're gonna go John Kay, she and her and him together would be the ideal choices. But Blake Lively, like I can't even say no to Blake Lively. How do you say no to Blake Lively? Blake Lively is like America's sweetheart today. So Green, Green Lantern, Age of Adeline, she would be wonderful in this role. She looks like freaking uh, Susan Storms from the comics in like every iteration ever. She looks exactly like her. And she was my, probably my top one, two picks for Jean Grey. But if she doesn't get that role, she deserves this one. So I'm going with Blake Lively. Next up we have, 
Zach Efron, Neighbors in Baywatch, and we have Dacre Montgomery, Power Rangers 2017, and Stranger Things. Now, if you pick Zach Efron, you're gonna get a personality that's very, very close to Chris Evans's Human Torch, which was arguably one of the best parts of, of the uh, early 2000s Fantastic Four. Um, I really liked Chris Evans as Human Torch, and I think Zac Efron would be the best choice for Human Torch. But Dacre Montgomery is also one of my favorite picks. He's like top three for me. So Dacre Montgomery would be dope as Human Torch, but I'm going Zac Efron on this one. Uh, next up, David Harbour and John Cena. I think we actually had this exact uh, uh, pairing not too long ago, but David Harbour, I think is the better choice over John Cena. So I'm going, I'm going David Harbour, but I do like John Cena in the role. Next up, Luke Evans and Brian T. We have had this one before. I choose Luke Evans. Next up, we have Joaquin Phoenix, Joker 2019 and Signs. And then we have Adam Driver uh, for Dr. Doom. Uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens and Black Klansman. I'm gonna go with Joaquin Phoenix. I think he's great. He was on my list um, for Doctor Doom and uh, I really do think he would be amazing in this role. He'd be perfect and he's older and that's important to me. So as if, if it's not important to you, you guys let me know. Maybe Adam Driver's your guy. So let me know. But I do think that if you're going younger, Adam Driver would be my probably top pick. So that's that's all I have, I have that to say. Good choices. Next up, we have Michael Fassbender uh, for Assassin's Creed uh, Days of Future Past for The Silver Surfer. So this one's a Silver Surfer and this one's fun because I don't know if you guys are aware, Doug Jones is the guy that played the Silver Surfer in the early 2000s. So I like that you're bringing this guy back. I really appreciate that because nobody knows it was Doug Jones. So you could easily take the actor that played him back then and bring him right back. I have no problem with that. But if you are gonna do that, I personally would like to see Michael Fassbender get a shot at Silver Surfer over Doug Jones, who's already played him. I liked him, but I think that Fassbender, you, you know, just freshen it up. Fassbender, I think, has more muscle mass. I think he's bigger. Um, and so that would be really helpful for me as a viewer. So anyway, that's what I have to say there. Uh, next up, James Earl Jones from Star Wars Rogue One uh, for Galactus and also Jeremy Irons. Both of these guys were in The Lion King. And uh, one of them was in Justice League. That would be Jeremy Irons. He played Alfred to Ben Affleck's uh, Batman. Man, seriously, both of these guys would be perfect, but I'm going Jeremy Irons for Galactus. Uh, his face would, would fit the, the helmet perfectly, and his voice is just so like menacing. It's literally Mufasa and Scar is what we're looking at right here. But I'm going Scar. I'm gonna go Scar on this one. So let's look at the teams. First up, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Zac Efron, David Harbour, Luke Evans, Joaquin Phoenix, Michael Fassbender, James Earl Jones. Dude, what a lineup, dude. That's awesome. Then Patrick Wilson, Blake Lively, Dacre Montgomery, John Cena, Brian T, Adam Driver, Doug Jones, and Jeremy Irons. Dude, these are almost flawless. Like, I love these. Um, and I love specifically the first, like, three and the very last pick for Team 2, like, a lot. But I think Team 1 is is all around like top top one top two picks of all time so i'm going i'm going team one good choices fan casting is dope next up we have just another fan cast account i mistyped that so if you guys are going to look him up uh there's a t after fan cast <laughs> it's fan cast you guys should know this by now i mistyped that my bad just another fan cast account we have and look i corrected it here so Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. We have Billy Crudup from Watchmen and Alien Covenant, which is really cool. I really like that choice. And we also have uh, actor number two, Dave Franco, Now You See Me, and Nerve. I love Dave Franco. He's one of my, like, I would say probably top 15, and I know that's a lot, but I have a lot of favorites. 15 actors of all time. I really enjoy him. Um, I think he would have been great as the, hum as the Human Torch. But it's really cool that you point out he could he could play someone highly intelligent because he did play someone that was really clever, not the same, but very clever um, in uh, Now You See Me. And so I think it would be really fun to see him play like a younger Reed Richards, but again, I don't want a younger Reed Richards. I'm going Billy Crudup for this one. Next up, we have Charlize Theron 
Susan uh, Susan Storm. I've already said she's one of my she's a, one of my favorite picks for this role. Love that Daniel Panamaker. I love this chick. The Flash, CW, and Sky High. Um, who didn't grow up watching Sky High and loving Daniel Panabaker in that role uh, as the the plant chick? Basically, a uh, knockoff Poison Ivory. It was so cool, so great. But I will say again, I don't think that she looks particularly like Susan Storm, and that's important to me. So I'm going Charlie's Throne also because of age. So that's my choice. Next up. Zach Efron, Baywatch and Neighbors, literally my favorite. Then Charlie Rowe from Salvation and Neverland, also a good choice. But I don't think anyone's gonna be able to sell me off of Zach Efron. I love Zach Efron for Human Torch. I choose Zach. Next up, we have Ben Grimm, The Thing, Michael J. White from Arrow, CW, and The Dark Knight. He's typically a DC guy. But we also have John David Washington from Black Klansman and Ballers. This is really cool. I love Michael J. White, uh, but I do. I would honestly rather see him play someone like Blade. Um, I think there's too many other roles that I would prefer to see him in. Uh, or like if you were to rec recast Bishop, you know what I mean? Like um, there's a lot of roles that I would prefer him in. And because of that, I think a talented actor like John David Washington would do really well in this role. So I'm gonna go John David Washington. Great choice. I never thought of these guys for this role. Good job. Also, uh, Namor the Submariner, we have Sam Witwer and Tyler Hoechlin. Now, Sam Witwer is one of my top picks for um, the Silver Surfer, and he was originally on my list for Namor, but I took him off because of how much I wanted him to play the Silver Surfer. Um, Sam Witwer is fantastic and could 100% play Namor, uh, so Namor the Submariner. But also, Tyler Hoechlin, like I mentioned, is, is too perfect. Just look at his face. Look at his face. Look at the eyebrows. Look at the strong chiseled jaw. Look at the down downward nose. Look at his hairline. Literally perfect. I can't say no to Tyler Hoechlin for this role. I give it to Tyler. Next up, we have Tom Cavanaugh, The Flash CW, and Royal Pains. We also have Joaquin Phoenix. Joker 2019 and Signs. Now, I think Tom Cavanaugh is a great outside the box choice for this one. I really liked him in The Flash. I like the multiple different roles he's played in that show. He's played like 15 roles in that show now. But um, the first role that we see him in in season one was amazing. I really liked him there. And I think that that shows that he could play someone like Dr. Doom. Although, Joaquin Phoenix is darn near unbeatable for this role. If I could have him, if we like, if the standalone Joker film doesn't like conflict contractually and he is able to play Doctor Doom, I would hope that Joaquin Phoenix would take the role. So I'm going Joaquin. Next up, we've got Matt Lesher, again from DC's Legends of Tomorrow is 13 hours. Um, he plays the reverse Flash, but in DC's Legends of Tomorrow. He plays like the, there's there's a bunch of different people that, uh, that play those speedsters. It gets kind of convoluted, so I won't get into the, who he is in that in that show. But nevertheless, he's a bad guy. He's a speedster. And Matthew Good from Downton Abbey and The Crown. I am definitely going Matt Lesher. This is a cool fan casting. I did not think of this. Um, just another fan cast account. You've impressed me yet again. This is really good. Uh, I don't think Matthew Good would be right right for that role. I I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just not seeing the same things that that you are. Maybe I just didn't see enough of his his body of work. But I think Matt Lesher is a, a fantastic choice. I'm definitely going Matt Lesher. I would have gone with Matt Lesher over a lot of the other castings um, for uh, Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer. Next up, Galactus, Peter Cullen, Bumblebee, and Transformers: The Last Night. If you don't know who Peter Cullen is, then you haven't seen Transformers: Optimus Prime. That is who he is. He is. Transformers, Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots. That's who he is. And so then Michael Ironside from X-Men First Class and Starship Troopers is also a good choice, but how could I avoid choosing uh, Optimus Prime for the Devourer of Worlds? That is like, that is too perfect. And his voice would be amazing in that. I would love that. So I'm choosing Peter Cullen. Next up, let's go over the team. So we have team one, Billy Crudup, Charlie's Throne, Zac Efron, Michael Jai White, we have Sam Witwer, Tom Cavanaugh, Matt Lesher, Peter Cullen. What a lineup, dude. That is amazing. And then next up, we have Dave Franco, Daniel Panabaker, Charlie Rode, John David Washington, Tyler Hoechlin, Joaquin Phoenix, Matthew Good, and Michael Ironside. Namor and, and Doctor Doom for Team 2 are like are flawless. I love those. But I'm going Team 1 because the whole, the whole picture just looks so good. 
So that's what I'm doing team one. Next up, we have comic movies remade. So comic movies remade, we have Freddie Highmore going very young for this role. The Good Doctor and Bates Motel. And then we also have Colin Hanks, Fargo and Dexter. I didn't see either of these ever. Like this is you, like this is you massively surprised me with both of these. Colin Hanks, I think, is a great choice for a younger Reed Richards. And Freddie Highmore is, in my opinion, far too young. <laughs> this is like way young. Like he, he's basically playing Franklin Richards at that point, um, in my in my estimation, just the way that I, I, I see him. But Colin Hanks, I love that. I'm going Colin. Next up, Haley Lou Richardson from Split and The Edge of 17. And then Malix, Melissa Roxburgh from Star Trek Beyond and Valor. Um, both really, really uh, pretty actresses. I think they both look really good. I, she's more brunette, I think, than, than blonde. She would have to dye her hair. Um, but I do think that Haley Lou Richardson would be great for a younger, a younger um, Susan Storm. And it looks like your castings are, for the most part, going very young, which tells me that you want a younger Fantastic Four. So uh, I can appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go with Haley Lou Richardson for this one. Next up, we have uh, Nick Robinson, Jurassic World and Love, Simon. And then we also have Max, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Thero uh, from Bates Motel and SEAL Team. Um, I I liked Nick Robinson, but I didn't love Nick Robinson. I didn't love Simon. <laughs> I, didn't, I just don't think he's that great of an actor. But I do like Max Thier uh, Thiero, if I'm saying that correctly. I'm choosing that guy. I'm choosing, choosing actor number two, Max. That's who I choose. Next up, Charlie Heaton from Stranger Things and New Mutants. Um, it's a shame about the New Mutants. I think that they're probably going to tank. Uh, it's probably not going to do very well at all. And that's a bummer because it's one of the last films that Fox is making for the X-Men. But, you know, whatever. They're getting we're getting rebooted anyway. So uh, and that's why we're doing these fan castings. But Aaron Taylor Johnson from Kick uh, from Kick-Ass and then Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. I really like I think he would knock it out of the park. Yes, he was in the MCU. He was Quicksilver. They killed him off. Could you get away with him being Ben Grimm? You could if you don't show him as as Ben. If you just show him as the thing. So yeah, I think that would work. Aaron Taylor Johnson, great choice, love it. Uh, next up, we have Ludi Lin, Power Rangers 2017, and Aquaman. Um, he was in Aquaman for like five seconds. <laughs> so barely counts, and he was unrecognizable. We could totally get away with uh, recasting him into Marvel. And then Daniel Wu, Into the Badlands, and Warcraft. I also really like him. If I had to choose between the two of these, I think Ludi Lin looks a lot more like Namor than this guy. But I will say Daniel Wu, looks very close and he's older um kind of a coin toss since most of your castings are younger anyway i'm not gonna let the uh the the youthfulness of of the castings affect it because if i try to go like older when we get to the end of this roster there's not going to be a lot of older people so it's not going to make for a very cohesive team anyway so i'm going to go with ludy lynn um so tony Curran uh for victor von doom the league of extraordinary gentlemen and blade 2 this is a really cool choice. I like that. But also, Wes Bentley is a great choice. Now, he's a little bit younger. Um, not super young, but younger. Closer to the Reed Richards that we're looking at for um, for these choices. And because of that, for consistency's sake, and also because I think he's a great choice uh, from The Hunger Games and Ghost Rider, I'm going with Wes Bentley for this one. Next up, Eric King, National Treasure, and Dexter. Uh, for Norn Rad the Silver Surfer, and then also John Cho, Star Trek Beyond and Searching. Between the two of these, I think I would go with John Cho. I don't think Eric King, I mean, he's bald, yes, but I don't, I don't think he, I haven't seen him play anything that makes me feel like he would be that, like, compassionate, um, and then also, like, incredibly just intimidating, like, yes and no. It's it's hard to it's hard for me to just wrap my brain around him in Silver Surfer, but you guys might. So let me know if you guys think that as well. Just write that here in the comments, and I'll check that out. But John Cho, Star Trek Beyond, and Searching is a great choice for uh, Silver Surfer out of the two of these. So let's keep moving. Next up for Galactus, we have again we have Optimus Prime, <laughs> P Peter Cullen, and then we have Corey Burton. This one's great. So Corey Burton, if you guys aren't familiar with him, he's the guy that plays uh, Count Dooku. Send, send word to the Separatist leaders that we are coming. The Jedi will be extinguished and eradicated. I, it's hard to do his voice because it's so unique, but 
uh, he does a great job. I love him in Clone Wars, Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Um, I'm choosing Corey Burton for this one. I didn't think I was going to pick anyone over Peter Cullen, but Corey Burton's a great choice. All right, so let's go over the list. Freddie Highmore, Haley Lou Richardson, Nick Robinson, Charlie Heaton, Ludi Lin, Tori Curran, uh, Tony Coran, Eric King, and Peter Cullen for the first roster. For the second roster, we have Colin Hanks, Melissa Roxburgh, Max Thero, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Daniel Wu, Wes Bentley, John Cho, and Corey Burton. I think, dude, this one's close, but I think I'm going to go team two for this one just because I really like Max Thero. Colin Hanks, Melissa Roxburgh is good. She's close. I, I chose Haley Lou, but it's close enough that I could I could justify that. And then Daniel Wu's great. Wes Bentley's great. John Cho's great. Corey Burton's great. So I'm choosing that. Next up, we have Mr. Funcaster. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. So now we have, this is cool. So uh, a lot of people are worried about the Netflix series because they're getting canceled right now off of Netflix. It's, there's a lot of business going on. I'll have to make a video explaining this, but just because they're severing the ties with Netflix doesn't mean that the, the actors are done playing the characters or that Disney's done making stuff with those actors in those roles. It just means that they're not gonna be made on Netflix. But remember, buying Fox means that they have 33% of the, the Hulu shares and now they're making adult content on there. They could very easily pick back up on, over on that side with Hulu. So uh, enough about that. I like Charlie Cox, but James Marsden from, from X2, Westworld, he played Cyclops back in the early 2000s. He is great. I think I would choose him to play Mr. Fantastic also because I think that Disney's not done with Charlie Cox. I don't think they're done with him as Daredevil. Next up, Emily, uh, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones and Star Wars uh, Solo, and then also Carrie Mulligan from The Great Gatsby and Drive. I haven't seen Carrie Mulligan very much uh, act. I haven't. I don't think I've seen anything with her in it. So I'm gonna choose Amelia Clark just because I'm gonna. I'm gonna claim ignorance. I just don't know. She looks like um, Susan Storm, but I think almost to the same degree that Amelia Clark does. And for that reason, I'm going Amelia Clark. Next up, we have uh, Johnny Storm and Human Torch. We got Ross Lynch and Harry Styles. Now, if I had to choose between Ross Lynch and Harry Styles, um, I think I'm going Harry Styles. Um, and here's why. I like Ross Lynch, but I think that Harry Styles is, he's, he, in Dunkirk was an amazing movie. He proved himself that he could act. He looks the part, he's got the personality. I think it would be worth it to give him a shot. Um, and I think that he could do really well. And plus him, him and Tom Holland would just be like riffing back and forth. I'm sure that they would have a, a great chemistry behind the scenes. Um, you know, both of them are, are British younger dudes. Um, rose to fame pretty quickly and um, yeah I think it would be great I'd love to see him side by side with Tom Holland next up Ben Grimm the thing Charlie Hunnam Pacific Rim Sons of Anarchy and then this one was very fun for me I I was so like surprised to see this as an option Matt LeBlanc from Friends um, and Man with a Plan uh, he d hasn't done a lot outside of Friends however Matt LeBlanc is totally Ben Grimm the thing now, I love Charlie Hunnam. I think he would be great as, um, uh, well, first of all, I think he'd be great as Ghost Rider, but I think he's also, uh, he would be great in this role as Ben Grimm. But Matt LeBlanc, being older, closer to what I would want for Reed Richards, I think that he's got it. He's He grew up basically, after 17 years old, he grew up in New York City. He has that accent. He's got that Italian vibe. I think he would be great. I think you should get him in that role of Ben Grimm. This is a, a wonderful casting. And this is why I love the fan casting summits. Because we get surprised with all kinds of outside the box thinking from creative people like you, Mr. Funcaster. Thank you so much. Love this. I choose Matt LeBlanc. Next up, Henry Cavill. Sick. Man of Steel, Mission, Impo Mission Impossible Fallout, and then Luke Evans, Beauty and the Beast, and The Hobbit. Like, I love Luke Evans, but yeah, if we could get Henry, Henry Cavill, like, that would be amazing. I would I would love to have Henry Cavill play um, Namor the Submariner, that'd be amazing. But I do think that Luke Evans is no, is no slouch, he's freaking jacked, not as jacked as freaking Superman, but he's close, uh, pretty close. And so, yeah, I'm gonna choose for this one, Henry Cavill for the novelty of it. However, I will say Henry Cavill is not done at DC and I can prove it. Um, so check, talk to me after after the video. That's too much to go into, but he's not done. Uh, there was a speculatory piece written and people ran with it. But anyway, let's keep moving. 
Victor Von Doom, Adam Driver, Star Wars The Force Awakens, Black Klansman um, would be great. But also Dan Stevens. This one's hard to, to, um, to choose between because I really like him in Legion. I like him in Beauty and the Beast. And you know what? Even though I don't watch the show, I've, I've had to watch a couple episodes because of my wife. Um, but when he was on uh, Downton Abbey, he was the best part of that. And uh, Legion, Beauty and the Beast, this guy has more range than anybody I know that's an actor. I haven't seen anyone swing so far in so many directions except for maybe. Like, I mean, James McAvoy, yes. Um, but then it's like James McAvoy and then probably Dan Stevens. Like, he's really good. I think that Dan Stevens could do this. Although I do want someone that's really intimidating, like really intimidating. And I think Adam Driver would probably be the guy for that. So I'm choosing Adam Driver, but not because Dan Stevens isn't great. He would be great. Um, next up for Silver Surfer, James McAvoy, Glass, and X-Men Days of Future Past. And then Michael Fassbender, Assassin's Creed, and X-Men Days of Future Past as well. Um, both of these guys would be amazing in this role, but if I had to choose between the two of them, I would go James McAvoy. And it's because I want Michael Fassbender for other roles. Um, but I do think they both knock it out of the park. I just think that James McAvoy, um, Silver Surfer does in a sense have a split personality. He's got the personality that he grew up with that is him, that is Norrin Rad, the compassionate, peace-loving um, you know, guy that, that is just trying to save lives. And then you have the Silver Surfer when his memories are blocked and you have to be able to play both. And I don't doubt that Fast, Fastbender can do that, but we know for a fact that James McAvoy can do that. So I'm going James. Next up, Sam Witwer, the Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Smallville. He was also, for those of you guys who don't know, he was also in Solo, A Star Wars Story for the same reason that he's in Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. It's because he voices a very specific character. So I'm gonna spoil it because if you guys didn't see Solo, you're probably either boycotting it for a really crappy reason <laughs> or a really good reason, but it's, it's, it's a great film and people are people are freaking missing it. So Solo has Darth Maul. If you didn't already know that, you've been living under a rock or you've been ignoring the film on purpose. Um, S Solo was awesome. He was a surprise guest in there. They got Ray Park back to play the physical, but they had him there to play the voice. Sam Witwer is an amazing voice actor and he would be great as Galactus. Christopher Walken is, <laughs> this is a funny choice for me. Because I, I think Christopher Walken's voice is so iconic and it's so unique, but it's so different. I would I would personally not want Christopher Walken to play Galactus. So I'm definitely going Sam Witwer for this one. It would take me out of the film if I heard Christopher Walken's like, so I, I'm going to need to feed very soon on a planet. You know, it's like you, you can't do like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna be Galactus, I mean obviously he could change his voice. He could just be different But Sam Witwer is great at that. We already know that so no risk Next all right, so let's go over the list Charlie Cox, Amelia Clark, Ross Lynch, Charlie Hunnam, Henry Cavill, Adam Driver, James McAvoy, and Sam Witwer And the second roster is James Marsden, Carrie Mulligan, Harry Styles, Matt LeBlanc, Luke Evans, Dan Stevens, Michael Fassbender, and Christopher Walken. Both these teams are really good and they're so like evenly mis like twisted in my head because like I want I want Marsden and then I want Clark and then I want Styles and then I want LeBlanc and then I want Cavill and then I want Driver and then I want uh, McAvoy and then I want Sam Witwer. It's tough, but I think I'm gonna go Team One, but not because of any lack of awesomeness. I really like Matt. First of all, Matt LeBlanc, the thing. Great job. Next up, we got Correct Rankings Fan Cast. So this guy, uh, welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. I'm, I'm honored to have you. Joseph Gordon-Levitt uh, is the first choice for Reed Richards, followed shortly by Patrick Wilson. Um, I think between the two of these, I think we already had a match that was either this one or close. I'm going Patrick Wilson. I'm gonna try to speed a little bit through these ones because just because of time, I know that you guys, um, you know, this is a big video. You're probably running out of popcorn at this point. Um, so Amelia Clark for Susan Storm or Leslie Mann. This one's cool. I really like this. Leslie Mann, I didn't think of usually like kind of like um, crazy mom vibe, you know, but I think with her, I think if she could tone that down a little bit, uh, I think that would be perfect. And then have some of that at times, but 
I think Leslie Mann would be a great choice, and I'd go with her over Amelia Clark. Next up, uh, Josh Hutcherson and Garrett Hedlund. I love Josh Hutcherson. He was on my list for the Human Torch as well. Um, Garrett Hedlund uh, also, I think I had Garrett on my list for uh, Angel on, on X-Men when I did the fan cast for that. I don't know, dude, this one's tough. I think I'm going Josh Hutcherson. I'm gonna give him some love. I love Garrett Hedlund. Uh, my inclination is probably to choose him, but I'm gonna go Josh Hutcherson for this one because I think it would be really cool to see him side by side with Tom Holland. That's what I wanna see. So yes, I'm going there. Next up, Sam Worthington for Ben Grimm from Avatar and Terminator Salvation and also Liev Schreiber from Wolverine Origins and Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. Between the two of the guy, these guys, even though he's younger, I'm gonna defy my own logic uh, here. Sam Worthington, I think, is a great choice. I'm gonna go Sam Worthington for Ben Grimm and I'm gonna stick to that, so I'm gonna stay there. Next, we have Namor McKenzie, Daniel Henney from Criminal Minds and Big Hero 6 and Brian T. Um, between the two of these guys, I'm going Brian T. I think that Brian T looks a lot more like Namor than uh, Daniel Henney does. And uh, both are great, but I think Brian T is better suited for the role. Next up, Pablo Schreiber, First Man and Skyscraper. I haven't seen either of those yet. I've been meaning to, but I haven't seen them. And I don't know if I've seen him in anything else. I have seen Jason Clark. So I'm gonna go Jason Clark. I think he's great for this role. Uh, he was on my list, I, I think initially for Beast. I don't know if he's kept on the list but I really like him. Uh, I'm gonna go with him for Dr. Doom. Next up, Ricky Whittle from the 100 American Gods for Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer and Keanu Reeves, John Wick the Matrix. Again, I've said John Wick, uh, I'm sorry, John Wick. Keanu Reeves has surprised me as a choice for the for Silver Surfer. Um, I, I don't personally, I don't personally see it, but Ricky Whittle is literally the most perfect person for Silver Surfer on the planet. Like undisputedly he looks exactly like the comic book silver surfer exactly and he would be able to play that perfectly when i saw the 100 i was like babe 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 it's silver surfer and she's like what and i was like look it's norm red i was like and i showed her like a side-by-side -side comparison of some art pics from my phone her phone she's like wow that actually does look a lot like silver surfer yeah and he's got a ton of like shirtless scenes and stuff he's already the silver surfer just put him in the role he knows how to do stoic he knows how to connect emotionally but more importantly he knows how to be a thinker that's one thing that his character Lincoln was on the 100 was he didn't talk much. He was like a thinker. So he was constantly strategizing and planning and he was um, he was protecting his own. He's very introverted. And for the Silver Surfer, a lot of it was is probably going to be like narr narrated thoughts from whoever is going to play him. I think it would be great to have Ricky Whittle be that. So next up for Galactus. Devourer of Worlds. We have Alexander Skarsgård, The Legend of Tarzan and True Blood, and Toby Stevens, Lost in Space and Black Sails. I think because of just the roughness of this guy, I'm going Toby Stevens. I have other castings that I want for Alexander Skarsgård. He's great. I love him. I'm going Toby Stevens, though, for this one. Let's recap. So first up, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Amelia Clark, Josh Hutcherson, Sam Worthington, Daniel Henney, Pablo Schriever, Ricky Whittle, and Alexander Skarsgård. And then for the second lineup, we have Patrick Wilson, Leslie Mann, Garrett Hedlund, Liev Schreiber, uh, Brian T, Jason Clark, Keanu Reeves, and Toby Stevens. It breaks my heart because Ricky Whittle is the Silver Surfer on Team 1, but I'm going Team 2 because the vast majority are the choices that I would, I would have chosen for that one. So, yep, that's it. Next up, we have uh, Devil of Fancast. That's Devil with a 3 instead of an E. Um, so if you're going to find him, look for that devil of fan casts with a three instead of an E. Um, let's get into this one. Andrew Lincoln from The Walking Dead and Alden Ehrenreich from Solo, A Star Wars Story and The Yellow Birds. He's a little bit younger and you guys know how I feel. Andrew Lincoln is the guy that I see um, better suited for this role. Um, I think Alden Ehrenreich did a great job in Solo. I have not seen The Yellow Birds, um, but... I, I, I don't see him as Mr. Fantastic. So for me, it's Andrew Lincoln. Next up, we have Kate Beckinsale for Susan Storm Richards. And then she's from Underworld and Van Helsing. Great actress. She looks the part. She totally looks the part. And Katie Cassidy, who was my one of my top picks for um, Jean Grey. I don't see Katie Cassidy um, as much as being Susan Storm. So I'm going Kate Beckinsale. I think she'd be great. Next up, we have Scott Eastwood for The Human Torch. Uh, from Suicide Squad and Pacific Rim Uprising, and then Liam Hemsworth 
for uh, the Hunger Games and Expendables 2. Um, I think, you know what, for this one, I might just go, shoot, I might go with Scott Eastwood. Yeah, either one could go, either one could be it. I, I think I'm most, I'm basically a tie on this one. I just told myself I'm not allowed to tie, so I have to pick one. Kind of tied, but Scott Eastwood. Um, so for this one, Sam Worthington, and then again, Charlie Hunnam. Between the two of these guys, I'm going Sam Worthington. Uh, because I think that he's he's got that head shape that would kind of like lend itself to being the thing. Uh, next up, Keanu Reeves, John Wick, uh, The Matrix as Namor. This is one that I could see. I don't see him as Silver Surfer. I see him as Namor. So if you're gonna do uh, Keanu Reeves, I think him as Namor is a great choice. And then Brian T as well, great choice. But I would probably go, I don't know, dude, this one's so tough. Uh, I'll probably go Keanu Reeves on this one. Um, so next up, uh, Wes Bentley for Doctor Doom, great choice, but it, uh, from Ghost Rider and The Hunger Games, but also Walking Phoenix. I'm gonna choose Walking Phoenix because he's older. I like both the actors. I think both the actors would be great, but Walking Phoenix is probably my guy. And he was he was the guy that auditioned for Doctor Strange. He was he was gonna be Doctor Strange until Benedict Cumberbatch got the role. So what what better way to continue that trail, get him back into that realm of I wanna be that Sorcerer Supreme. The next guy in line for Sorcerer Supreme is Doctor Doom. Get him in that role. That's perfect. So that's what I choose. Next up, oh, this is cool. So obviously based on your, your image for your thumbnail for your profile picture for Devil of Fan Casts, um, you like Daredevil. And this guy's from Daredevil. Matt Gerald um, in Daredevil, he plays that guy who makes the, the armor, the suits for uh, Daredevil. And um, he's also in Rampage. But then Patrick Wilson from Watchmen for uh, the Silver Surfer. So I know I've picked Patrick Wilson for Mr. Fantastic a lot but I do also like him as Silver Surfer. And because I saw him first as Mr. Fantastic, I didn't think of him for the Silver Surfer, but I like that. And I think he would look great in the role. Um, he's got a very high hairline, so it's easy to see him as if he was bald. I think that Matt Gerald looks good, but I would go Patrick Wilson. Next up, we have Michael Persbrandt from The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, and then also Russell Crowe, Man of Steel and Gladiator. Um, if you don't remember who Michael Persbrand is uh, from The Hobbit, he plays that giant, like, you know, like there's werewolves that are wolves that turn in, like, between man and wolf, and they have that, like, in-between state? There's a guy in The Hobbit that's like a bear wolf, like a weird bear, like a bear wolf kind of thing. And he goes from this massive bear into this gigantic standing upright half bear, half dude. And he plays him, but his voice, his voice is so freaking deep. It's so awesome. And I would choose... I, you know, and then the next one's Russell Crowe, of course. I love Russell Crowe, but I gotta go Michael Persbrand. This is a great pick, dude. I I would never have thought of this guy. Great call, I love that. Michael Persbrand for, for uh, Galactus, Devourer of Worlds is great. Next, let's go over the list. First one, Andrew Lincoln, Beck, uh, Kate Beckinsale, Scott Eastwood, Sam Worthington, Keanu Reeves, Wes Bentley, Matt Gerald, and Michael Persbrand. Whew, that's a lineup, that's a good lineup. Next we have, Alden Ehrenreich, Katie Cassidy, Liam Hemsworth, Charlie Hunnam, Brian T, Joaquin Phoenix, Patrick Wilson, and Russell Crowe. I'm going to go with Team One. If the whole team from Team One got picked for these roles, I would be totally content. I could I could sleep well. I could love the entire cast. This is awesome. I love these. Next up, FanCast World. So this one, welcome to the FanCasting Summit. And if I didn't say that before for Devil of Fancast, welcome to Fancasting Summit. But Reed Richards, fantastic, Mr. Fantastic. We got Joseph Gordon-Levitt, a fan favorite. I don't personally see that one. And John Krasinski. If I had to pick between these guys, I'm going John Krasinski. Next up, we have Rachel McAdams from Doctor Strange and Mean Girls. And Emily Blunt, A Quiet Place and Edge of Tomorrow. Now again, she's in Doctor Strange. Uh, she's already in the MCU. It's a shame though, because I think she would be perfect. I think she would be perfect to play Susan Storm, flawless even. Um, but she's in the MCU and for that, and because I picked John Krasinski, I gotta go Emily Blunt, um, who would also be great. I, I'm, I'm not saying she's not great. Now, Sam Claflin, 
for Johnny Storm the Human Torch and then Dacre Montgomery. Both of these guys are legit. I think we had a pairing like this earlier. Sam Claflin is my pick. He's he's my top pick. One of my number two, I think number two or three or something for Human Torch is Dacre Montgomery. I love that guy. Um, yeah, either one could work for me, but Sam Claflin's my choice. Next up, for the for the thing, both of these are sick, dude. Oh, you're making this really hard for me, dude. So David Denman, uh, Power Rangers 2017, The Office, love him. He's my, I think he's my number one pick. And Sam Worthington from Avatar and Clash of the Titans. Let me back off so you can read that. But yeah, I think Sam Worthington would be great. I'm going David Denman. Um, Namor McKenzie, Brian T. Uh, from the Wolverine and Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, and then Luke Evans, Beauty and the Beast, and The Hobbit. Now, what's funny about this is both these guys have been in the Fast and Furious franchise. Um, I think I think Luke Evans was in Fast Six or something. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. There's so many of them. But anyway, I choose Luke Evans. Uh, Victor Von Doom. We have Joaquin Phoenix and Adam Driver. This pairing has come up a couple times now. Um, Joaquin Phoenix is my choice because I want an older Doctor Doom. If I was going a little bit younger. Yes, Adam Driver is great, but I'm going Joaquin Phoenix. Next, we have Ricky Whittle, the literal perfect Silver Surfer, in my opinion. Perfect. There is no flaw here. And then Keanu Reeves, who I think would be better suited in Namor. And because of that, I'm certainly going Ricky Whittle. I don't think I would pick anyone over Ricky Whittle for Silver Surfer. Next up, Liam Neeson, Batman Begins, The Chronicles of Narnia. Excellent voice. And then we also have uh, Hugh... Keys uh, Burn, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road and Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, I saw Journey to the Center of the Earth a long time ago. I can't remember what his voice sounds like. And that frustrates me because I'm sure that it was probably really cool. I'm going to go Liam Neeson because he's one of my favorite picks. So I like, I already picked Liam Neeson in my own list. I'm going Liam Neeson. I think his face works. I think his voice works. It all works. Now let's go over the list. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Rachel McAdams, Sam Claflin, David Denman, Brian T., Joaquin Phoenix, Ricky Whittle, and Liam Neeson. Dude, the second, like, almost the entire top row is, like, gold. John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Dacre Montgomery, Sam Worthington, Luke Evans, Adam Driver, Ke Keanu Reeves, and Ke uh, Hugh Keys Burn. I have a trouble with that name. Dude, this is tough. Oh, this is so tough. Frick, dude. All right, I'm going, I'm going with the top. I'm going with the top because all the villains are great, and, and I think that... Everyone is great on, on Team 1. I have no qualms with Team 1, so let's go Team 1. Uh, so Jack's FanCast, welcome to the FanCasting Summit. We have Matt Smith from The Crown and Doctor Who, and we also have Matt Bomer from Doom Patrol and White Collar. Um, I think that if I had to choose between both of these, both of them are great. I think both could do it. I'm going Matt Bomer because of looks and um, him playing an actual, like, playing a doctor doctor not doctor who but doc like playing a doctor i think is is perfect and it sets him up for the role very very well i love matt bomer can't wait to see well not see him he's fully wrapped in in gauze in uh, doom patrol uh, as invisible man but yeah i think he'd be great um as reed richards next up we have oh this is tough dude dang it okay so susan storm richards Blake Lively is number one from Green Lantern Age of Adeline. Literally one of my favorite female actors of all time. And then Rachel McAdams, Doctor Strange, and Mean Girls. Also super legit. But this actually makes it easy for me because Doctor Strange, she's already in the MCU. So I can just justify that she's not able to do it. I'm going Blake Lively. Thank you for making that easy. Then uh, Taron Egerton for Johnny Storm the Human Torch or Ansel Elgort. This is a tough call. This is a really tough call. I like Taron Egerton a lot, and I think that he would be good. But he's not blonde, and he's uh, a little bit older. I'm gonna go Ansel Elgort. He's younger. He's blonde. I think he would he would go really well with Tom Holland on screen. So I'm gonna go Ansel Elgort. Next up, oh dude, this one's this one's tough. I love Alan Richson. So t Titans, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was on New Girl for like uh, I think a couple episodes. Um, He's just great, dude. I freaking, he was on Smallville. Gosh, um, he played Aquaman on Smallville. David Harbour, Stranger Things, Hellboy. <sighs> dude, okay. I'm gonna go David Harbour, but I'm not even upset. Like I would, with, with Alan Richson, I would love to have Alan Richson play the thing. Next up, Luke Evans, 
Beauty and the Beast and The Hobbit and Louis Tan. This is a cool one, man, because he was on Iron Fist in Netflix and Deadpool 2. So Deadpool 2, uh, Fox property slash Marvel uh, for like five seconds. And then um, also Iron Fist in Netflix. He was in there for one episode. Really, really good actor. Greatly underused by Marvel so far. Uh, so far, not high, not very well used. But I would say, let's make mm, let's make him Namor if you're going younger. But again, I like older. Except for with with Namor, he doesn't really age. He does kind of, but not really. So. Um, he kind of stays the same age for basically ever. So it's not the same argument that I would have with Reed Richards, Dr. Doom, and Ben Grimm. They should all be close to the same age. You don't have to have the actor look the same age, though, for, for Namor. Because he's kind of, like, timeless almost. At Atlantean makes him heal and regenerate and not age. So, gosh, it could go either way. Although I do like Luke Evans a lot. I, I would probably still choose Luke Evans, but it's pretty close. I like, I love this casting. Good job. Good job, Jax. So next up we have uh, actor number one for Victor Von Doom is Nicolaj Koster Waldo. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I think I am. So uh, from Game of Thrones and Shot Caller, dude, he is like freaking perfect. Um, and he's a great age for the role too. Wes Bentley, also great. I'm going Nicolaj. Uh, Coster Waldo. I love this casting. I didn't think of it. It's great. I love he's got the nose that kind of fits that mask um, The cheeks. He's just super serious. I love this guy. Anyway Good choice Ricky Whittle Keanu Reeves. I'll make this simple Ricky Whittle um, Next up Liam Neeson and Jeremy Irons. This one's tough, dude. This one's really really tough If I had to choose between Liam Neeson and Jeremy Irons, I might actually choose Jeremy Irons yeah, I'm choosing Jeremy Irons, but it's close. Liam Neeson is is great for the role. Jeremy Irons is great, and I think he's perfect. So let's go over the list. Matt Smith, Blake Lively, Taron Egerton, Alan Richson, Luke Evans, Nikolaj CW, I'm going to call him that, Ricky Whittle, Liam Neeson. Those are team one, which is amazing. Team two, Matt Bomer. Rachel McAdams, Ansel Elgort, David Harbour, Louis Tan, Wes Bentley, Keanu Reeves, and Jeremy Irons. You know, for the first half of the list, I would probably pick Team 2. But because the, the Team 1 is also really good, I'm going to go team, team 1. Yeah, I'm going Team 1. I can't pass Ricky Whittle, Liam Neeson, Nicolaj, Luke, Alan Richardson, Tara Negerson, and Blake Lively. Just because I think Matt Smith is not as good as Matt Bomer. It's great. I think it works. Team 1. So Connor, Connors dot fancasts. Welcome to the fan casting summit. So now, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. We have Matthew McConaughey from Interstellar and the Dallas Buyers Club. We also have John Cho from Searching in Star Trek Beyond. I'm gonna go Matthew McConaughey. He looks the part. He's right, just around the right age. I love it. Next up, we have Jennifer Connelly for Susan Storms and Tony Collette. I personally don't much in, like Tony Collette. I do like Jennifer Connelly. Now she was in the Hulk in 2003, but that's not the MCU Hulk. That was the Hulk before. So she's not in the MCU. You could add her in. So I'm going Jennifer Connelly, but she's gotta be blonde. None of that black hair. You gotta go blonde. Um, so for Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, we have Sam Hugan, if I'm saying that correctly, from Outlander and Bloodshot 2020, um, the upcoming film from Valiant Comics. And then also we have Alan Richson from Titans, from uh, Hunger Games Catching Fire. Between the two of these, I'm going Alan Richson because I, I haven't seen a lot of Sam Hugan and I love Alan Richson. And to me, they're both kind of in the same like build range and they're both a little older than I would prefer for Johnny Storm, honestly. So I think if I'm gonna pick out of the two of those guys with the exact same qualifiers, I'm gonna pick the guy I like more, which is Alan Richson. So next up, Ben Grimm, Joel Egerton from Brighton Warrior and Ewan McGregor for uh, The Thing. This is outside the box. I haven't seen anyone cast uh, Ewan McGregor for The Thing yet, but I'm, I'm still, I'm gonna go Joel Egerton. Um, next up, we have Daniel Day Kim from Lost and Hellboy for Namor, and then Henry Cavill, Man of Steel and Mission Impossible Fallout. Again, Man of Steel is not, is not done. They just don't have a writer yet. They don't have someone to tell the story. That could change now after James Gunn does Suicide Squad 2. Um, but nevertheless, we're not here for that. Um, 
I, I'm gonna go with Daniel Day Kim because it's more, it's to me, it's more realistic. And uh, I think he looks a lot closer to Namor than Henry Cavill does. Even though I love Henry Cavill and he's jacked out of his mind and I think he would be really fun in the role of Namor, I'm gonna go Daniel Day Kim. Next up, we have Doctor Doom. This is dope. Richard Armitage or Richard Armitage. He was in Captain America, the first Avenger, which, but by the way, that was one of the earliest films in the MCU. He played a Hydra agent that, that stole the super soldier serum while, while Cap just got transformed. Um, it was like four seconds. He was in the film for like four seconds. No one's going to remember him. It's going to be, you could easily just drop him in, especially if he's going to be behind the mask. Get that guy as Dr. Doom. So good. John Hamm, I think, would also knock it out of the park, but I'm definitely going, I can't pass up Richard Armitage. From The Hobbit, Captain America, totally. Richard Armitage all day. Um, so, Silver Surfer, Norn Rad. Uh, we have Mahershala Ali from Green Book and House of Cards. Great actor. But we also have Andrew Garfield, The Amazing Spider-Man, Hacksaw Ridge. I would personally go Andrew Garfield for this one. The reason being is that Mahershala Ali, he does not, to me, look like the Silver Surfer. Uh, very, very different facial features. It would change the look of him so much to me from the comics, from the old TV show, from the films and stuff. I, the way that I see the Silver Surfer um, is a lot, is, is kind of narrower, a little taller. I like him to have muscle, which is one thing Mahershala Ali has on Andrew Garfield. But I would say, I think that Andrew Garfield could play that, that like the compassionate role and then the stoic role and then just kind of bounce back and forth. Um, really well he did a really good job in hacksaw ridge um and i think that that would lend itself to his role as norm rad so i'm gonna go andrew uh for galactus we have andre brar who's hilarious but he also has a really really macho manly voice from brooklyn 99 in the mist and then donald sutherland from the hunger games and trust this one was really fun for me uh to see i think donald sutherland would knock it out of the park but i do I, I like Andre, Andre Brar, and I would like to see him in more stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and say Andre Brar. All right, let's go over the list. Matthew McConaughey, Jennifer Connelly, Sam Hugan, Joel Egerton, Daniel Dakim, Richard Armitage, Mahershala Ali, Andre Brar. So that's team one. Team two, John Cho, Tony Collette, Ali Richardson, <laughs> Ali Richardson, Alan Richardson, <laughs> Ewan McGregor, uh, Henry Cavill, John Hamm, Andrew Garfield, and Donald Sutherland. I am gonna have to go with team one. I'm going team one. Fan, uh, both are great, but I like team one a lot more. Fancasting 10, welcome to the Fancasting Summit. We have, first up, John Krasinski from A Quiet Place and The Office. Ewan McGregor, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, and uh, Christopher Robin. I think that Ewan McGregor would be amazing in this role but I'm probably going with John Krasinski. Uh, next up, we have, oh, this is awesome. So, uh, and it it's really, really good. Jennifer Morrison, Once Upon a Time and Warrior. Awesome actress. I like her. I like her in Once Upon a Time. I think she's great. She actually looks a lot like my wife, um, a lot. And uh, uh, Elizabeth Banks, Power Rangers 2017 and The Hunger Games. I would, if, against someone else, I probably would have picked Jennifer Morrison. But Elizabeth Banks is my number one pick for Susan Storm. So I'm going Elizabeth Banks. Um, this one's cool. Johnny Storm, The Human Torch, Dylan O'Brien, and Dave Franco. Two guys who were like, they were on my list for Iceman. Um, I, I don't know if I put both of them on my list for Human Torch. I think I took Dave Franco off. But it was just because he was one of my top picks for Iceman. So I didn't want to recycle all the same guys. Um, but I love this. I love Dylan O'Brien. I love Dave Franco. Honestly, this is a tie in my head. I, I, it, I almost don't even want to pick. I'm going to make this the first slide and the last slide where I actually don't pick. I'm not going to pick. <laughs> you guys pick for me, okay? You tell me down below who I should be picking. Ben Grimm, The Thing, uh, David Harbour, Stranger Things, Hellboy, um, Scott Kahn, if I'm saying that correctly, from Hawaii 5 and Ocean's 13. This is a great pick. Uh, I did not think of this. This is great. I don't know though, because I'm I'm so stuck on David Harbour. Like I really want him. Um, I'm gonna go with Scott Con just for the novelty. You guys already know I love David Harbour for this role, so I'm gonna go with Scott Con, give him some love. Um, and I do think that I would be happy if he if he got the role too. Next up, this one's cool. 
uh, Ian Anthony Dale for Namor from Hawaii 5.0 and Salvation, and then Joe Taslim uh, for The Fast and Furious 6 and Star Trek Beyond. Between the two of these guys, in my opinion, it's a no contest. Ian Anthony Dale all day. Ian Anthony Dale looks like Namor, just straight up. Like He looks like probably nine out of 10 iterations of of namor so far in the comics he looks really good his eyebrows aren't peaked but they have that kind of raise so it gives the illusion of the peak and then uh he's got the chiseled features he looks mad all the time <laughs> which is what you need for namor and he's got he's got the hairline so it's just great i think it's perfect i choose ian next up if i'm saying this right matthias schoenarts uh or matthias schoenarts uh, from Bullhead and Red Sparrow for Victor Von Doom and then Dan Stevens. Ooh, this one's tough. Oh, this one sucks. Um, mm, you know what? I'm going Dan Stevens. I'm going to surprise you guys. Most of you guys, I would bet, are picking Matthias. I'm picking Dan Stevens. I like Dan Stevens. Um, and I want him to get cycled back. Don't, don't lose him just because we bought Fox. All right, so Theo James, Divergent, uh, and How It Ends. Good actor. I like this guy. Um, and I think with a shaved head, he looked very much like like Namor the Summer. Or I'm sorry, <sighs> Namor the Summer. Norrin Rad, sorry. Um, and Liam Hemsworth from The Hunger Games in the last song. I like Liam Hemsworth. I want him to get a role in Marvel really, really badly. I'm going to go Liam Hemsworth. Um, so here we go. Galactus. Brian Cranston. Freaking awesome. I love that guy. And then Dominic Purcell, who's got one of the, the like thickest voices I've ever heard. Um, not deepest, it's deep, it's very deep, but it's thick. And uh, if you've seen him in DC's Legends of Tomorrow or Prison Break, you already know what I'm talking about. Between the two of these guys, again, if you had given me anyone but Dominic Purcell, I would have said Brian Cranston all day, no exceptions. And I might still, like it's, it's up there, but Dominic Purcell, if you're gonna go with just vocal for, for Galactus, I go Dominic. If you're going like on-screen presence and for um, for uh, the voice, Brian Cranston. That's that's tough. I don't I don't know, dude. I'm gonna go Dominic Purcell just because I have to pick. All right, here's the teams: John Krasinski, Jennifer Morrison, Dylan O'Brien, David Harbour, Ian Anthony Dale, Michael uh, Schoenarts, Theo James, and Brian Cranston. And then at the bottom we have Ewan McGregor, Elizabeth Banks, Dave Franco, Scott Kahn, Joe Taslim, Dan Stevens, Liam Hemsworth, and Dominic Purcell. Ah, uh, dude, this one's rough, man. Um, I'm gonna go with Team. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna, I'm going with Team One, even though I freaking love Ewan McGregor, Ewan, Elizabeth Banks, Dave Franco, and uh, Dan Stevens, and Liam Liam Hemsworth and Dominic Purcell. I love those guys, but I also think that the people you picked on top are just so almost inarguable. Like it's hard to not choose those guys. Anyway, so that's what I picked. Team One. Next up, Fancast Dot Frenzy. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Um, so Michael Fassbender as the first choice, and then Matt Damon. This one's fun. Uh, I I want to point out something. Matt Damon is in the MCU. Okay. So first of all, he was in Deadpool 2, which is not really MCU. Um, he was the uh, I forget what his name is, like Invisible Guy or something. Like it was it was the guy that can't be seen. Um, oh, Vanisher. That's what it was. He played Vanisher. And then also, um, he was also in Thor Ragnarok. And if you don't remember that, he was playing... Remember when Loki was putting on that play and everyone was worshipping Loki and his sacrifice he made in, in Thor The Dark World? And they were mocking it, kind of. And uh, Loki was pretending to be Odin. He was playing Loki in that play within the movie. So he's kind of already in the MCU as an Asgardian. Um, but easily... Easily could be repurposed and recast, not a problem. Um, so, Mr. Fantastic, uh, but I would I would say between these two, I think I'm going Michael Fassbender for Reed Richards. I don't know why. I just see I see it in his face. Yeah, I see it in his face. All right. Uh, after that, we have Susan Storm. We have Rachel McAdams, who's in Doctor Strange, and Emily Blunt. Because she's in Doctor Strange, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards Emily Blunt. Uh, who's great and I love her for the role I just think that looks wise I would have deferred if she wasn't you know not available so here's uh, Johnny Storm the Human Torch Hartley Sawyer The Flash CW Glory Days um, Andy Samberg Brooklyn Nine-Nine Hot Rod 
This one's tough, but I'm going Hartley Sawyer because Andy Samberg is not blonde and he's very, very specific with his humor style, uh, which I'm not sure that it would meld well with this unless you picked Terry Crews as the thing. If you picked Terry Crews as the thing, Andy Samberg as the Human Torch would be literally perfect. Um, other than that, other than that one scenario, I would say Hartley Sawyer gets the Human Torch. David Harbour, David Denman. Which David is gonna get the thing? Between the two of these, I love David Harbour, but I'm going David Denman, because I really love the way that his eyes look for, for the thing. They look like the thing's eyes. And uh, I, I'm gonna go with him just because I really liked him in The Office. I really liked him in Power Rangers. I can't wait to see him in Brightburn. I'm really excited for this guy. I really like him. So next up, we have um, Patrick Wilson for Namor and also Zachary Quinto. Zachary Quinto is my number two pick for uh, Namor the Submariner. Like one or two. He's either top two. I forget which one. But I have to go Zachary Quinto. If I don't go Zachary Quinto, I've literally betrayed myself. Um, and Patrick Wilson would be good, but I think Zachary Quinto would be good. And I don't think Patrick Wilson wants to go underwater again after Aquaman. Probably not. Um, so here's Victor Von Doom, Lars Mikkelsen, the brother of um, uh, Mads Mikkelsen. So Lars Mikkelsen um, is amazing. If you haven't seen him in Sherlock or House of Cards, he can play Doctor Doom really, really well. So can his brother Mads, but his Mads, Mads is already in the MCU. Get Lars in as Doctor Doom and you've won yourself a huge, you, you've won a battle that was un, almost unwinnable after you made him Kaecilius, which was great, but there's better villains. <laughs> there's better villains for better actors. <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's what I would say. Sam Witwer though, could play Doctor Doom incredibly. And that would be no loss at all. But he is younger, and I would prefer to see an older person like Lars play Doctor Doom. So, Norrin Rad. We have Tom Bateman, Murder on the Orient Express, and Da Vinci's Demons. I think he might have been in Zoo as well, the show on Netflix, possibly. I might be mixing him up with someone else. But then also Rami Malek, Mr. Robot, and Bohemian Rhapsody. If we're going Silver Surfer, I'm definitely going Rami Malek here. He's just a fantastic actor. Just great. Looks a little closer to the part. Kind of small but not a big deal. Um, he could probably bulk up and they could just, you know, fix it with CGI <laughs> and motion capture. Not a big deal. All right, so now here we go. Between Kevin Michael Richardson from The Cleveland Show and The Batman, the animated, um, we also have John Noble, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and Salvation. Between the two of these guys, I'm going John Noble from Return of the King. He looks like his face would be the face of Galactus. Um, and he sounds rough enough, like thick enough, old enough, mature enough, deep enough to play that as well. So Kevin Michael Richardson, I love his voice, but he doesn't look like Galactus. That's a fact. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go with John Noble. Of course, you can CGI it, you know, so it's not like looks are the end of the game, especially if you're picking voice actors, for goodness sakes. So I'm not saying that you have to look like him, but because he does and his voice is good, it's like two factors versus the one factor this guy has. So this guy's better rounded for the role. I'm picking him. All right, so let's go over the lists. Michael Fassbender, Rachel McAdams, Hartley Sawyer, David Harbour, Patrick Wilson, Lars Mikkelsen, Tom Bateman, John Noble. Then at the bottom, we have Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Andy Samberg, David Denman, Zachary Quinto, Sam Witwer, Rami Malek, and Kevin Michael Richardson. I'm gonna go with team one for this one. I think all around, I think I agree with everyone on team one, whereas there's a couple people on team uh, on team two where I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe not, you know, like, ish. So I'm gonna go team one. All right, so next up we have Fancaster76. Thank you, Fancaster76, for returning to the Fancasting Summit. So next we have John Krasinski, uh, Quiet Place and The Office, and John Hamm. Between the two of these guys, I'm actually picking John Hamm. He's not a lot older than John Krasinski, but he's older, older is gonna help me in, in my picking. So I'm gonna go with John Hamm. Next up, we have Rachel McAdams and Emily Blunt. In this case, um, she is in Doctor Strange and not really in a role that's kind of like retconnable. Um, she was kind of a main character. So I'm going to go Emily Blunt for this one. I think she's good. I think she'll be great. Uh, oh, again, we got, oh, this is tough. Sam Claflin over Dacre Montgomery by a hairline, like not a lot. So I'm going to go there. Uh, next up, we have David Harbour, Stranger Things and Hellboy 2019, John Cena, 
blockers and Bumblebee. I'm going David Harbour. So next up, Namor, we have Brian T and Tyler Hoechlin. It's Tyler Hoechlin for me all day. Um, we have Victor Von Doom, Joaquin Phoenix, and Michael Fassbender. I want, I want Joaquin Phoenix because he's a little bit older. That's why I'm picking him. Just a little bit. But I'm going to go there. So, yes, great, great choice. Either one of them is a great, great choice. Um, Ricky Whittle, literally perfect. I pick him every time. Um, Liam Neeson or Patrick Warburton. See, this one's fun. I love Patrick Warburton, Warburton from a series of unfortunate events on Netflix and also The Emperor's New Groove. He's on um, Family Guy. Oh, yeah, he plays Joe. Hey, Peter, can I borrow some sugar? Um, yeah, he's kind of, it's hard to do that voice. But anyway, Patrick Warburton, great. I think he would be great. I think maybe even better than Liam Neeson in this case. In my opinion. I, you guys probably disagree with me, but let me know down below. So Patrick Warburton. Let's go over the list. Fancaster 76 picks. John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Dacre Montgomery, David Harbour, Brian T, Joaquin Phoenix, Ricky Whittle, and Liam Neeson. That is one heck of a lineup, dude. John Hamm, Rachel McAdams, Sam Claflin, John Cena, Tyler Hoechlin, Fastbender, Keanu Reeves, and Patrick Warburton. Whoo. Both of these are really, really good. I'm going to go team number one. It makes the most sense to me. All right. Agent Fancast. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. You pick John Krasinski and Andrew Lincoln. Between the two of these, I'm going Andrew Lincoln because he's older and I think he'd be great for the role. I'd love to see him in that. Also, we have Emily Blunt and Catherine Winnick. Again, Catherine Winnick. I'm not going to pass up Catherine Winnick. She's great. I love her for the role. She's perfect. Next, we have Andrew Garfield for Johnny Storm or Dacre Montgomery. I pick Dacre Montgomery. Yes, almost every time on this one, if you're going to compare those two. Next up, we have David Harbour or John Cena. I pick David Harbour. If we're going to do Luke Evans uh, or Brian T, I choose Luke Evans for Namor. And Michael Fassbender or Mads Mikkelsen. See, look, this is why uh, I, I'm almost mad that they got him for a villain that's not super important like Kaecilius. Um, I mean, he did help the movie be better because he's great. But Mads Mikkelsen should have been Dr. Doom. Um, dang it, dude. <sighs> retcon him. I say retcon him. Show Dr. Doom with a burned, messed up face. He doesn't look anything like Kaecilius. And you never show him really outside of the mask in a normal face ever unless it's a flashback to his childhood. That way you can get away with using him. I say use Mads Mikkelsen. I choose Mads. Next up, we have Ewan McGregor and Dan Stevens. I choose Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens is great for this role. He can do this role like I, I think nobody else could, really. I have a few choices of my own, but I think Dan Stevens is glory for this role. Next up, Lawrence Fishburne, The Matrix and Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, for Galactus, and then Keanu Reeves for uh, The Voice of Galactus. I choose Lawrence Fishburne for this one just because I like his voice better for this role. And then you would just CGI the face of Galactus. You don't need to have uh, exact representation for for him in that one because he doesn't really look like Galactus um, I mean you could change that you could obviously change that it's not a big deal but I think I would go with Lawrence Fishburne regardless I go with him all right next up we have uh, for team one John Krasinski Emily Blunt Andrew Garfield David Harbour Luke Evans Michael Fassbender Ewan McGregor Lawrence Fishburne so for team two we have Andrew Lincoln Catherine Winnick Dacre Montgomery John Cena Brian T Mads Mikkelsen Dan Stevens Keanu Reeves I'm going with team two. I love uh, Lincoln, Winnick, Montgomery. I love T. I love Mickelson. I love Stevens. Uh, I think that's perfect. I love it. Yeah, my man. Comic Man Jake is new to the fan casting scene. Um, he is a, a homie of mine that is on YouTube and on Instagram. Check him out. He does a lot of great reviews for comic books for all your favorite Marvel, DC, whatever you want. And he does movie stuff as well. Check him out. This is going to be a lot of fun. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit, Comic Man Jake. We have first up Hugh Laurie or John Krasinski. I love this. I love what you did here. John Hugh Laurie, uh, it would be my pick. He's older. He plays doctors regularly. <laughs> and he's, uh, I think he's he just great. He's great for this role. I would love to see Hugh Laurie in this role. And then uh, Amy Adams or Emily Blunt. This is cool. I love Amy Adams. I think she would be... Uh, she would be good in this role, but I'm going to go with Emily Blunt for this one because it's hard It's hard for me to picture her outside of the DCEU at this time. 
Um, I don't think that Man of Steel's over, and I'm I firmly do believe that. Like not not conspiracy level. I think that it's like it's legit not not done. It's just about getting a writer and a director. So um, I do like her though. Good choices. Great actress. But I'm gonna go with Emily Blunt for this one. So then uh, for Johnny's from the Human Torch, we have Taron Egerton, Robin Hood and Kingsman, and we have Jack Gleason, Game of Thrones, and Batman Begins. Jack Gleason's good, but he's so young and he looks so young. And for me, that's tough. I mean, I want him, I want Human Torch younger than the other actors, but I think Taron Egerton's kind of closer to realistically younger. So I'm gonna go Taron Egerton, and I love him. I love Taron Egerton as an actor, even more so than Jack Gleason. Next up, Adam Baldwin from Chuck and Full Metal Jacket. And then we also have Jensen Ankles, Supernatural, and Small. I like uh, Adam Baldwin has those like those piercing blue eyes. Um, he looks like he could play that role. But I'm going to go with Jensen Ankles because Smallville, Supernatural, I've been a fan of him for a really long time. I think he would be good in this role. Um, except that I do agree, Adam Baldwin's like head shape and his like kind of gruffness is more visually appealing in the in the direction of going for Ben Grimm. Oh, it's tough. I'm gonna go Jensen Ackles because I'm biased and I like Jensen Ackles better. Uh, but you guys let me know if I'm crazy. So next up, we have Namor McKenzie, the Submariner, Donnie Yen, that would mean some seriously sick fight scenes. Um, and also Zachary Quinto. I have to go Zachary Quinto. He is one of my top picks. He's so great for this role, he's perfect. He looks like Namor. I just can't get around that. Zachary Quinto's my guy. And then between, okay, so this is really hard for me. Kong Manjik, you know me very well. Viggo Mortensen for Dr. Doom is glory. It is absolute glory. I picked him, uh, both of these guys I think were on my list for Magneto. But if either one can't do Magneto, the other should do Dr. Doom. Two of the greatest villains of all time, hands down. No exceptions. And, um, I think that Luke Evans would be great, but Vigo is older, and he's a, I think he's a better actor. I'm going with Vigo. Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer. We got Keanu Reeves from The Matrix, and then Sam Witwer. If I had to choose between the two of these guys for the Silver Surfer, I'm definitely going with Sam Witwer. He's on my list. I really think he could pull off both Norrin Rad and the Silver Surfer. Both of those he could do. Um, and he's incredibly talented as a, um, a voice actor and an on-screen presence. Um, I would just love to see him in that. Not that Keanu Reeves couldn't do it, but just that I love Sam Witwer and he's uh, on, he's one of my top picks for the role already. So uh, then also we have John Noble and James Earl Jones. Now both of these guys' voices are just so great, so awesome. Um, it's hard to top James Earl Jones' voice, so iconic. Mufasa, um, Darth Vader, he owns some of the top like names in voice acting ever. Like he's one of the quickest ones people know. But John Noble, I think, would be great, and he looks like he could be the face behind the mask of Galactus. So I would go with him. Let's recap. So we have Hugh Laurie, Adam. Uh, I'm sorry, Hugh Laurie, Amy Adams, Taron Egerton, T uh, Adam Baldwin, Donnie Yen, Viggo Mortensen, Keanu Reeves, and Do and John Noble. So after that, we have John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Jack Gleason, Jensen Ackles, Zachary Quinto. Luke Evans, Sam Witwer, and James Earl Jones. So, dude, this is like, this is murder trying to pick this here, dude. Oh my gosh, dude. Ah, It's, for me, like, a lot of my choices were back and forth. Like, very, very back and forth. I'm gonna have to go, because you picked my top picks for, for um, like, some of my top picks for um, Silver Surfer, for Namor, um, and then Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman, of course, are, like, staples uh, if you're gonna do John and... Emily, uh, I'm gonna go with team two. That's my pick. So you guys let me know what you like down below. Next up, user underscore fancaster18. Welcome to the fancasting summit. Let's take a look. So uh, he likes a lot of younger actors here. A Hayden Christensen, not super young. Um, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, both of them probably close to the same age. Uh, I don't know what how old Hayden is, but I think they're relatively close, probably within like six years of each other or something like that. Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, would be great. I know he would perform the act uh, of playing Reed Richards greatly. I just don't see him as Reed Richards. Now, looking side by side with this image, um, you can see that he Hayden Christensen does look a little bit like Reed Richards 
in this iteration of the comics. So um, if you're gonna go like Future Foundation or something like that, I think that this is your guy. I think Hayden Christensen looks a little bit more. He's way young, way younger than I would want, but between the two, I'm picking him. So next up we have, this hurts my feelings. One of my favorite TV actresses of all time, Minka Kelly, Friday Night Lights and Titans. And then also Blake Lively from Green Lantern and Age of Adeline. Both of these ladies have worked with DC. Uh, it's like my literally my favorite like TV actress and my favorite film actress. Like how oh it's like so well actually I think maybe Elizabeth Banks is probably my top favorite female actress, but but close, very, very close. Ugh, this is so tough, dude. Oh, look, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go with um, older. I would say do Blake Lively. If you're gonna go slightly younger, do Minka Kelly. It's tough. I, I don't know, dude. I'm gonna go Blake Lively, but just because I want older, but that's like a that's like breaking my brain. So here we go. Colin Ford and Hart Denton, I, I have not, I don't know either of these guys, but they both look basically the same. <laughs> and uh, I think that uh, if you're gonna go Minka Kelly, you should go Colin Ford. If you're gonna go with Blake Lively, you should go with Hart Denton because then they'll look more like siblings. Because I picked Blake Lively, I'm gonna go Hart Denton from Riverdale. Next up, we have Jensen Ackles, or Ackles, however you wanna say it. Supernatural and Smallville. And then we have Tom Hardy, good choice, from Venom and Mad Max Fury Road. Um, I think that Tom Hardy would be really good in that role. I think he fits. He's not in the MCU. The Sony-verse is separate, so Venom's not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so that could work. He's not in the MCU just yet. You could put him in that role, although I don't know that Marvel would be willing to do that since it's a Sony-Marvel kind of ish property um even though it's really sony but people know venom so i don't think they would want venom's actor coming over unless it was going to be venom i'm gonna go jensen ankles but i really like that i really like that casting all right we've got rich ting lone survivor and no tears for the dead and luke evans the hobbit and beauty and the beast for me i personally do not see rich ting as as uh namor he is asian but to me that's not enough um Luke Evans does look a lot more in the direction of, of Namor, and I'm going Namor for, for uh, that one. I'm going with uh, Luke Evans. Now, Victor Von Doom, Rufus Sewell, the man in the High Castle and A Knight's Tale, and then Ben Mendelsohn from Captain Marvel and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Ben Mendelsohn's awesome. I cannot wait. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek at a video I'm gonna be doing. Talos. The, the image should be backwards right now because that's how I have it. But Ben Mendelsohn's playing a scroll in Captain Marvel. So he's already in the MCU as a primary villain, which will probably carry over. If he doesn't die, it's going to be a really important role that we'll probably see recurring over and over. Um, but because he's in the MCU, I'm forced to choose Rufus Sewell. I, I actually would have chosen Ben Mendelsohn. In fact, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to choose Ben Mendelsohn. Just do it. Um, just do it. So then Ricky Whittle. The 100 and American Gods and Zachary Quinto, Star Trek Beyond and American Horror Story. Zachary Quinto is awesome. And yes, I think he could play the role, but he's my Namor. He's like, he's my top, like one of my top Namors. And Ricky Whittle is my top Silver Surfer. I'm going Ricky Whittle on this one, but good call. Good ones. Um, so for this, James Earl Jones, Lion King, Star Wars Rogue One. And then also Mark Hamill from Batman the Killing Joke. He plays the Joker. And Kingsman, um, where he plays that, uh, that professor. And also, everyone knows he's in Star Wars. So I think he would also be great. Uh, if you're gonna do Mark Hamill, that would actually be really nice. That would be really cool to give Mark Hamill a role that he can be proud of <laughs> instead of instead of the way they treated him in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, I, I think it would be really nice. This makes me want to choose him. I think vocally, I would probably still go with James Earl Jones, but you could get away with Mark Hamill, and I like Mark Hamill. So. Um, both amazing Star Wars actors. They've worked together in the past. Um, I'm gonna go James Earl Jones for this one, but it's a tough call. All right, let's look at the lists. Hayden Christensen, Minka Kelly, Colin Ford, Jensen Ackles, Rich Ting, Rufus Sewell, Ricky Whittle, James Earl Jones, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is the second team. Uh, so for the second team, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Blake Lively, Hart Denton, Tom Hardy, Luke Evans, Ben Mendelsohn, Zachary Quinto, and Mark Hamill. I am, mm, you know what? I'm gonna go team one for this one. And the only two that I think I'm like, eh, ish on are probably, um, it would be the picks for Namor and Dr. Doom. I wish I could flip those. Um, yeah, that would, but I'm gonna go team one as is. So 
Next up, James the Butte Castiglione. Thank you for joining the Fan Casting Summit and welcome. We have some really cool picks here. Now, I love the way that this guy thinks, okay? So I tried to get him here for the first Fan Casting Summit and he was, unfortunately, he had a lot going on. He was really busy, a hardworking man. Um, but I was able to rope him in and get him here for this one. Check these out. Eric Dane from Grey's Anatomy and uh, The Last Ship and then Noah Weil from ER and the Librarian. Do you see what he's doing here? He's casting do people who play doctors to play a doctor. That's smart. That's really smart. Eric Dane, I think I'm gonna have to go with Eric Dane for this one. He's a little bit older and to me, he has more of that head and nose shape that would look more like Reed Richards. So I'm gonna go with Eric Dane for this one. I really like both of these though. Next up, we have Michelle Williams from Venom and The Greatest Showman. And then we also have Katie Sackoff from Rida, Rida, sorry, Riddick um, and Battlestar Galactica. Between the two of these, um, I would go with Katie Sackoff. To me, she looks more like um, Susan Storm from the comics, but Michelle Williams looking, looks an awful lot, like especially like these fan arts of, of um, Susan Storm. Really, really close. Good eye, man. Like, I think you and I think a lot alike as far as, like, we, we just check to see if they would be good for the role and then qualify based on, like, appearance. Um, so then uh, here, Drew Van Anker, Pretty Little Liars, Devious Maids, and then Kellen Lutz, Twilight, and Legend of Hercules. I don't know both of these guys very well, but I have seen Kellen Lutz. And I think that if I was going to choose one of these guys, I think Kellen Lutz would be the better choice because of his build. Comic, the comic book versions of Johnny Storm, um, he when he's flamed on, he looks pretty buff. He looks kind of muscular. And I would want someone that kind of fills that bill a little bit, unless you're going to go with an absolute kid, um, in which case it doesn't have to be. But for this guy, I think I would go with Kellen Lutz. I like that guy. So next up, we have Kevin Durant, who's one of my top picks for um, the thing, Vikings and X-Men Origins Wolverine, and then Terry Crews, who I've talked about endlessly. Between the two of these guys, I gotta say, I'm gonna go with Kevin Durant. But personality-wise, it's hard to deny, Terry Crews is actually perfect to play the role of Ben Grimm personality-wise, size-wise, build. Um, I think that he would be able to connect emotionally with feeling the same way that Ben does when you walk around and like people might be intimidated by you, even though you're like the nicest guy ever. I think he would have that. So it's close for me. This one's real, real darn close and he's going to be CGI'd anyway. So like, you know, even if you don't think he looks like the part or whatever, it doesn't matter really. Um, this is one of those roles where I can just say, look, I don't care so much about the, the human form Ben Grimm as much as I care about the, the Rocky form Ben Grimm looking accurate. So as long as you get that form right, I don't really care who plays him. So Terry Crews would be great. But I do think that Kevin Durant is, is awesome for this role. So I'm going to go Kevin Durant. Um, all right. So here we go. Daniel Henney for Namor or Ian Anthony Dale. I'm going Ian, Ian Anthony Dale. I mentioned this earlier. I don't think that Daniel Henney's close, but he doesn't really look like Namor. Ian Anthony Dale does. And I'm going him for sure. Uh, next, we have Victor Von Doom. We have Matthias Schoenartz from Red Spear and Bullheads, which is a good choice. But also, this guy was on my list. Goran Visnik, ER, and Timeless. He plays a doctor. He plays someone that is um, really intelligent, but also kind of evil. But he, he's he's not evil for the sake of evil. He's just, uh, he believes himself to be righteous in his pursuit. And that's what Dr. Doom is. He's a complex character. This guy's huge, by the way. He would be great. I think he's like 6'4 or something. He's like really big. Um, and so I think Goran Visnik is great and he's my pick. And then uh, here we go. Dude, this one breaks my heart. I don't even know how to decide here. Both of these guys are on my list for the Silver Surfer. I love both these guys to death. Um, Sam Witwer from the Clone Wars and Smallville is one of my top two picks uh, for Silver Surfer. And then Matt Lanter is also amazing. He's like one of my top three or four picks for uh, Silver Surfer, and he would rock the role of Namor so, I'm sorry, blah, 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 Namor, with uh, Norin Rad. I, I always say Namor because it starts with an N. I'm trying to say Norin. Norin Rad um, uh, really, really well. I think they'd be great. Both are great. Um, both would be awesome, but I'm going to go Sam Witwer. Next up, Brian Thompson from The Terminator and The Expendables, and then the, uh, Keith David from The Princess and the Frog and The Chronicles of Riddick. For these two, I would I would go Keith David. I'm gonna go with Keith David. I, I really enjoy his voice. I like his vocal work, and I think that he would do really well. 
uh, in the role of Galactus. So great, great castings and very unique. I love these. So let's go over the list. Eric Dane, Michelle Williams, Drew Van Aker, Kevin Durant, Daniel Henney, Matthias Schoenertz, Sam Whitworth, Brian Thompson. Then down at the bottom, we have Noah Weil, Katie Sackoff, Ka Kellen Lutz, Terry Crews, Ian Anthony Dale, Goran Visnik, Matt Lanter, and Keith David. So literally everyone except for Eric Dane that I picked is on the bottom. Uh, kind of. I think Ke Kevin Durant. Yeah, I forgot about Kevin Durant. But either way, you know I love Terry Crews. Um, Noah Weil would be great. I'm going team two. If I got to have the pick, I'm going team two here. Awesome choices. Dr. Fancast. Welcome to the Fancasting Summit. We have, first up, James McAvoy for uh, Mr. Fantastic, and then we also have Ewan McGregor. Between the two of these guys, I am going with Ewan McGregor. Um, I think that <clears throat> him being older and him also just, <clears throat> sorry guys, uh, him being older and also uh, with his just personality, I think he would be really good for the role. There, I really don't think there's anything that James McAvoy couldn't play. I think he's the most pliable actor you could ever want to have on a set. But I'm gonna go Ewan McGregor because of age, because of looks, and yeah, I think that's that's pretty much great. Um, Charlize Theron or Bryce Dallas Howard. I like Bryce Dallas Howard a lot, um, but I'm gonna go Charlize Theron on this one. She's a little bit older, and she looks more, to, to me, she looks more like Susan Storm. Um, next up, oh, this is cool, dude, I like this. So Bretton Thwaites from Titans and The Giver for Johnny Storm the Human Torch is probably a, a fantastic idea. Um, although he's tied up with DC right now. But nevertheless, uh, Ansel Elgort, Baby Driver, and Divergent. I'm going to go with Ansel because it's more realistic. He's not tied up with DC. And um, he's close to the same age. Pretty close. A little bit younger, I think. Um, and I think he would do really well next to Tom Holland. Both of them would, but I think I can, I can really see it with Ansel. So I'm going to go Ansel. Next up, Joel Egerton or Terry Crews. Oh my gosh. So this one... Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I love Joel Egerton, and I think he is great for this role, but I'm gonna go Terry Crews because of personality on this one. Like, it's just so so much night and day difference between Joel Egerton's personality and what we've seen him do and, and Terry Crews. Terry Crews falls way more in line with what we want for this one, so I'm gonna go with him. Next up, we've got Brian T and Sam Whitworth. I choose, uh, oh, you, th th you dog, this one's so hard. <laughs> what the heck? You, you had me thinking, um, uh, Silver Surfer for a second because I saw Sam but I did pick Sam Whitworth on my list initially for, for Namor I think I took him off but um, I'm gonna get I don't know dude Brian T's great mm, I'm gonna go Sam Whitworth but you know what if they pick him I'm gonna need I'm going to need them to raise his eyebrows I'm gonna need them to do the full on like Namor thing it's gotta happen like because Brian T has that going on that's why a lot of people saw him in the first place for the role but Sam Whitworth has the hairline. He's got the jaw. Look at that. Look at the jaw. Do you see the picture up above? Brian T doesn't have that jaw, that cheekbone shape or the jaw structure. Sam Whitworth does. And, uh, you know, the eyes. I honestly don't think that Brian T's eyes look anything like, like Namor's. But Sam Whitworth's do. And so I'm going to go Sam Whitworth on this one, actually. I surprised myself and you surprised me with this choice. Good job. Next up, we have... Cillian Murphy, Batman Begins, and uh, Dunkirk. And then we also have Wes Bentley from Ghost Rider and The Hunger Games. Gosh, dude, both of these are really, really good. Uh, they both have the eyes to tell the story behind the mask, but I do think that I would go Wes Bentley. I'm going to go Wes Bentley for this one. I really like those. Next up, we have Michael Fassbender, X-Men First Class and 12 Years a Slave, and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch for Doctor Strange from Doctor Strange and The Hobbit to play Na uh, the Silver Surfer. I almost said Namor. Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer. Um, I'm going to have to choose because we all know Benedict Cumberbatch is already, um, he's already Dr. Strange. I'm going to go fa Fastbender between the two of these. Um, although if he wasn't already, uh, Dr. Strange, I would say yes, absolutely put Benedict Cumberbatch. He would have been on my list, put him in the, uh, in the role of Silver Surfer, but he already is. So I'm going Fastbender, who would also be great. And then for the Devourer of Worlds, Galactus, we have ne uh, Liam Neeson and Keith David. Between the two of these guys, I think I'm gonna go with Liam Neeson. Uh, again, it's the face, and again, it's the voice. Both have great voices that can work really nicely for this, but I'm gonna go with Liam Neeson. 
let's recap. Dr. Fancast, you have James McAvoy, Charlize Theron, Brent Thwaites, Terry Crews, Brian T, Cillian Murphy, Michael Fassbender, and Liam Neeson. What an awesome lineup. That is so great. And then after that, we have Ewan McGregor, Bryce Dallas Howard, Ansel Elgort, Joel Egerton, Sam Witwer, Wes Bentley, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Keith David. Ah, this is tough, dude. Okay, I'm going to just go with, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with team one. Even though there's a lot of castings that I was like dead set on for team two, I really like team one as well. So I'm going to go team one. Daft Detective. Yes. Welcome back to the fan casting summit. My brother, uh, one of the originals, he helped me kind of, I, I ran this idea past him. And so, yeah, good, good man. Um, next up, we have Ken Bauman. So Ken Bauman from The Secret Life of an American Teenager, clearly younger. Uh, and then uh, he's Call Me Crazy and a five film. And then Dylan Bruce, uh, if, I, if that's correct. I Googled it one time and it said Bruce Dylan, so I'm not even sure if that's his name or if it's Dylan Bruce. I thought it was Dylan Bruce. I fact checked this. Let me know if I'm wrong, if, if I didn't get that correctly. But Dylan Bruce, Midnight, Midnight Texas and Orphan Black. I'm gonna go Dylan Bruce because you guys already know. I want an older guy. I actually don't think that Ken Bauman looks like a Reed, but he could look like a kid Reed. Uh, maybe maybe you use both of them. Maybe use them in a flashback, but we don't really want flashbacks after the Fan Four Stick movie. So let's let's keep moving. Dylan Bruce is great. Um, next up, we have Rose McIver and Yvonne Strahovski. I really like Yvonne Strahovski. Um, and if you're gonna go with younger, uh, I would say Rose McIver. But I'm gonna go Yvonne Strahovski for this one. Again, a number number two pick. So then. Uh, for Johnny Storm the Human Torch, we have Tanner Buchanan, Designated Survivor, and Cobra Kai. And we also have Hunter Parrish from Quantico and 17 again. I'm definitely going here. I've seen Quantico. Uh, Quantico. I haven't seen Cobra Kai yet, but I really like this guy. Uh, Hunter Parrish from Quantico. Really good. Um, so I'm going him. <clears throat> and he looks the part to me. <clears throat> Next up, for Ben Grimm, we have Alden Ehrenreich, Sto Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Hail Caesar. Uh, we have after that we have Jason Segal from How I Met Your Mother and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I like the idea of Alden Ehrenreich as Ben Grimm, but I am going Jason Segal because um, he's bigger, he's rougher, he's funnier uh, in my opinion, and I think that he would be great. Now I want the blue eyes, right? So I definitely am gonna want some blue eyes, but that's e that's an easy fix. So great, great casting here. I love that. Next up, we have um, Namor McKenzie, Alex Mraz from The Twilight Saga and Suicide Squad, and also Zachary Quinto. There is no way I'm not picking Zachary Quinto. I have to pick Zachary Quinto. He's my he's my he's one of my top favorites. I've been talking about that since I saw him in Star Trek as Spock. As soon as the ears came on, um, I was like, holy cow, it's Namor. You know, like I was like, what in the world? And so I've been, I've been saying that since back then. This is, it has to happen. Love it. So then next we have, oh, this is tough, dude. We've got Adam Driver. If you're gonna go with the younger uh, Victor Von Doom, Adam Driver's your dude. And then Nicolaj Coster Waldo uh, is, oh, dude, look at him. Look at him. He, it's like he's wearing the mask. I can see the mask on him already. Um, Game of Thrones and Black Hawk Down. It's this guy. I'm picking Nicolaj, dude. So good, great, great choice. Now for a younger Silver Surfer, Jacob Anderson, Game of Thrones, Overlord, and then Sam Witwer from Star Wars Rebels and Smallville, I have to go Sam Witwer, dude. He's one of my top picks. He's perfect for the role. I've said this over and over for like over an hour now. Fantastic, I love it. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys want a younger Silver Surfer? Do you guys want a younger Fantastic Four? Or do you want them to be a little bit more mature like Tony Stark or the Hulk or Steve Rogers? Like most of the adult um, other superheroes in the, in the MCU. Let me know. And then from here, Galactus, we have Charles Dance from Game of Thrones and Alien 3, which is a great choice. Excellent choice. And look at that nose. Looks very much like, like uh, that picture right there. But then also, this one like is awesome. Ian McDermott. Uh, he is on my list for Galactus already. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith proves that he has one of the most pliable, crazy, awesome voices in the world. Have you ever heard the Star Wars? Have you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It is not a story the Jedi would tell you. He's very like, like, he's got range. Like, unlimited 
power like very like he's got highs he's got lows he's got depth and he can just he can do whatever he's great i love him i would love to see him play galactus he's my choice easy easy and so for these let's go down the list ken bauman uh rose mciver dan uh tanner buchanan alden Ehrenreich, alex Moraz, adam driver jacob anderson charles dance you made this very easy for me you lined up all the younger actors on this side <laughs> which is great and then your older actors, Dylan Bruce, Yvonne Strahovski, Hunter Parrish, Jason Zagal, Zachary Quinto, Nicolaj, uh, CW, Sam Witwer, and Ian McDermott. The entire roster uh, for your team two is like legit. I freaking love it. And I like the team one too, but I like team two better. That's my pick. So then we have reimagined fan casts. So this is going to be really fun. Uh, so here we go. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the fan casting summit. Welcome back. And, um, Matthew McConaughey for uh, Reed Richards, Interstellar and Dallas Buyers Club, and then Andrew Lincoln, The Walking Dead, uh, and Strike Back. Take a look at both of these dudes. I never realized it, but they both look very similar. They both have that high raised hairline. They have the same eye shape, the same eyebrows. Not the same nose close, it's close, but uh, you know, uh, Lincoln's nose doesn't go down as much. It goes forward and uh, McConaughey's goes down. Very fun to kind of compare that. Either one could do it for me. Um, and you know I'm vis visually aesthetic. You picked two dudes that look very identical. Um, not identical, but close. And so I'm gonna have to go with, um, I'm gonna go McConaughey. Just because I've seen, I've seen more with him in it. I've seen, you know, The Walking Dead, like not all the way through, but parts, pretty early stuff. And uh, I like him, but I'm gonna go with McConaughey. Next up we have, Catherine Winnick and Amelia Clark. I love both of these, but Catherine Winnick takes the cake for me. She just looks like Susan Storm all the way through. She's a great actress. Um, also from Vikings, we have Alexander Ludwig for uh, J Johnny Storm. Then we have uh, Dacre Montgomery for The Human Torch. Now, Alexander Ludwig would be a great uh, uh, Human Torch, but I'm going Dacre Montgomery for this one. I just, I love him for the role. I think he's great. Next up, this is cool. See, look, this is some outside, look at this. Nobody else picked Ben Foster, but Ben Foster, Hell or High Water, X-Men Last Stand, he played Angel back then. And then he's also, uh, we also have Michael Cudlitz from The Walking Dead and Band of Brothers. Both of these guys look perfect to play the human Ben Grimm, and both of them are perfectly equipped to play the actual thing, the Ben Grimm, that is the thing. Dude, this is like a coin toss, dude. Like either way, I, I'm gonna go Ben Foster because I really, really like Ben Foster. Um, but seriously, either one could work. Michael Cudlitz was on my list for the thing. I took him off to make room for other people. But um, I think Ben Foster is great. I love it. Good choice. Way to think outside the box. Way to reimagine. <laughs> and then uh, also for Namor the Submariner, we have Taylor Kitsch. <clears throat> who nobody has submitted yet. Um, and uh, Friday Night Lights, X-Men Origins Wolverine. He played Gambit. Great actor. Love this guy. He does actually look a bit like Namor. I can actually see that. His eyebrows have a slight peak. Not a lot, but a little bit. And um, yeah, he's got the sharper features, the raised hairline. Yeah, I think, I think he could do really, really well as Namor. I hadn't seen that yet, but that's awesome, dude. Way to, way to see what nobody else is seeing. Way to reimagine. And then also Luke Evans, Beauty and the Beast, and The Hobbit is of course a great choice. Um, dude, either one works for me. I'm gonna go with Luke Evans just because I have him on my list. But yeah, dude, solid, absolutely solid. Um, Michael Fast, okay, so for Victor Von Doom, we have Michael Fassbender and Christian Bale. If I had the choice between the two of these guys to play Dr. Doom, I might go Christian Bale here. Um, I think both of them, and again, both of these guys do look very similar. Take a look at these guys again. Look at the hairline, kind of close. Um, Christian Bale is a little sharper at the point, um, but they have, you know, similar nose, same exact facial hair pattern, except for on the right, uh, Christian Bale's is like shaved shorter. Uh, you know, Fassbender's got a little more beef on his on his beard, but yeah, really similar look. Very, very, very talented actors. Very highly respected, especially among the comic book community. Um, either one, coin toss. Uh, I'm gonna go Christian Bale because it's very unique and I like that. Now, for this one, uh, James. So we we've seen this one, Gustav uh, Skarsgård, as well. I don't think we saw him for Silver Surfer. Did we see him for Silver Surfer? I think we did. 
Um, but James McAvoy, I love him for this role. Uh, Gustav uh, Skarsgård, Vikings in Westworld. I'm gonna go James McAvoy for this one because I, I know that his range is capable of being what the Silver Surfer is, uh, truly. So, and with Sk Gustav Skarsgård, we know that he can be a savage, but to see him also play that tender, loving, compassionate, like, um, you know, like peace seeking person, we have not, or I have not seen that yet. So I'm gonna go with James McAvoy. Let me know if there's something I need to see with him in it where it shows off his capability to play the dichotomy, both sides of not only the Silver Surfer, but playing Norrin Rad. Let me know if you guys uh, have any of that for, for Gustav, because I like the guy. I think he would be good. Next up, Galactus, Devourer of Worlds, Leaf Schreiber, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, and then Brian Cranston. Between the two of these guys, I'm going Brian Cranston. Um, I, I think both of them have a great voice for this. Leaf Schreiber's is really, really good, um, but I'm gonna do Brian. I, I like Brian. Uh, him as Zordon was really good. Um, and then also uh, Breaking Bad, of course. So um, yeah, that's where it is. So with this, let's go over the list. Matthew McConaughey for Team One, Catherine Winnick, Alexander Ludwig, Ben Foster, Taylor Kish, Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, and Leif Schreiber. For the second, we have Andrew Lincoln, Amelia Clark, Dacre Montgomery, Michael Cudlitz, Luke Evans, Christian Bale, Gustav Skarsgård, and Brian Cranston. Now, I really like both of these lists, but I'm gonna go number one because I like them basically equal, but James McAvoy was like a clear yes for me, and um, Ben Foster, clear yes for me. So that tilted it for me in the favor of this side, and Catherine Winnick, so I'm choosing this one. Good job, great, great fan casting. And then fancast.force, welcome to the fan casting summit. Let's get into your lists. So now we have, again, Matthew McConaughey and John Krasinski. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with, it's either, but I'm gonna go John. I'm gonna go with John um, just because I see him more as a Reed Richards than I see Matthew as a Richards, but he is older and it could work for me. Like it could be adapted, it could work. But I'm gonna go John. So next up we have Jennifer Lawrence, X-Men First Class, The Hunger Games. Um, and then we also have Emily Blunt, Mary Poppins, and The Devil Wears Prada. So with that, oh, sorry, I'm gonna go um, with, I'm gonna go with uh, Emily Blunt for this one. Next up, Justin Hartley from This Is Us in Smallville for Johnny Storm and Human Torch and Jack Griffo. I think if, with the pick that we have for um, uh, Susan Storm, I think that Jack Griffo is a little too young. So I'm gonna go with Justin Hartley. I really like him. He seems a little bit old for, for the comparison, but it's closer and you can justify it. Like you can kind of get away with it. So I'm going with him. Next up, we have Tobey Maguire. Uh, for Ben Grimm, which is super awesome. I freaking love this. Ben, uh, Brothers, Spider-Man 2. And then we have Mark Wahlberg um, for uh, Ben Grimm. Now, I really I really think that this is incredibly unique. Nobody is choosing Mark Wahlberg or Tobey Maguire for these, but I really appreciate that, that you did. I like, I think I like um, Mark Wahlberg for this one. Maybe. No, I'm gonna go Tobey Maguire. I'm going Tobey Maguire. I was trying to stay off it because I love him so much and I feel like I, I don't want to just pick him because I love him. I know that he could do the role. It would be fun to have him like, you know, messing around with whoever's gonna be Johnny. Um, just picking on him back and forth and just, I, I think it would be fun. Mark Wahlberg could obviously do it. It's it's fun. I think I'm biased here, but Toby is my choice for this one. Next up, we have Namor, Alexander Skarsgård, The Legend of Tarzan, True Blood. We have uh, Luke Evans as well. So for Namor, even though Alexander Skarsgård's good, I'm going Luke Evans. Um, and then for, this is cool. For Victor Von Doom, Seth Green from Family Guy, um, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then we have Michael Fassbender. Now, I really like that you picked uh, Seth Green here. It's very unique, but I'm, I'm still thinking that I want someone that's got that presence that can tell that story from behind a mask. Um, with their eyes, their body language, their size, whatever, you know. So I'm thinking I'm going Fastbender. I, I have to go Fastbender here. And then uh, for Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer, um, we have The Hunger Games, Isn't It Romantic? And uh, Keanu Reeves uh, as well for Silver Surfer. So again, I don't really see him as a Silver Surfer. I'm gonna go with Liam Hemsworth for this one. Um, and then for Galactus, we have Liam Neeson, 
Taken, The Chronicles of Narnia, and Ron Perlman, Hellboy, and Pacific Rim. His voice is just amazing. Um, I love Ron Perlman and basically everything he's in, but I'm gonna choose Liam Neeson because I think it's better for Galactus. I don't, I don't know why. I just feel like his voice would would be better in that in that role. So let's recap. Matthew McConaughey, Jennifer Lawrence, Justin Hartley, Tobey Maguire, Alexander Skarsgård, Seth Green, Liam Hemsworth, Liam Neeson. So after that, we have John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Jack Griffo, Wal Mark Wahlberg, Luke Evans, Michael Fassbender, Keanu Reeves, and Ron Perlman. This is so tough. Oh man, this is tough. I'm gonna go team two because I feel like uh, John, Emily, and Mark are gonna work well together. Um, Luke, Fassbender, and Ron Perlman are totally reliable, and Keanu Reeves could get the job done too. So the vast majority there, I think I agree with. I'm gonna go there. So Fan Casting Central, welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. Um, we have Patrick Wilson and Matthew McConaughey. Between the two of these guys, I think I'm gonna go with Patrick Wilson. I think I think of him more as that kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know if it's just like nerdy, tender. It's, it's weird to kind of like compare them in your head for a role you haven't really seen them play. But I think Patrick Wilson uh, for me is more along that lines and I'm gonna choose Patrick Wilson. Blake Lively is a, like I've said, one of my top favorite actor, actresses of all time. But Chantel Van Santen was arguably the best female next to probably Daniel Panabaker on The Flash. And I'm yes, I'm including the chick who's playing Iris. I don't really care for her. She's very pretty, but she's like, whether it's the writing or the script, she's in the way. Like she's totally in the way. She's getting, she's bringing down the Flash. And she, when she was on the Flash, that was an actual story arc I could have gotten behind. She should have played Iris, and they should have kept her as the reporter. She never should have been like, oh, I'm Team Flash. We are the Flash now. No, you're not. We are not. You're a reporter. He's the Flash. But she was great. She was great in that. Dude, you've like, you've made this really difficult for me. Um, and she was also in Beauty and the Beast on CW. Um, gosh, dude, I'm probably still gonna go Blake Lively, but not by much. I think this is a great choice. Chantel Van Santen, great choice. Um, Liam James is the first one, and then Dylan Playfair. I don't know, dude. For this one, uh, Liam James seems way too young for me. I'm gonna go Dylan Playfair. Yeah, definitely Dylan Playfair. And then um, for uh, Ben Grimm, we have David Denman, who I love, and then Joel Egerton, who is also awesome. I'm gonna go with David Denman. Uh, for the next one, we have Brian T. And Yu G Tai, if I'm saying that correctly. So Yu G Tai is from the Swindlers and Healer. I'm going Brian T on that one. Uh, the other guy doesn't really look like Dane to me. Oscar Isaac uh, for Victor Von Doom uh, from Apocalypse, X Men Apocalypse. Um, I think this is a good one. Now, people hate it on uh, Apocalypse because it didn't look like the comic book Apocalypse. It looked like its own new kind of Brian Singer version. And then at the same time. Um, he was he was not acting like Apocalypse. He was acting like this weird, like, yes, I will give you the power that you need. You know, it's like super like whispery and whatever. And that's not Apocalypse. Apocalypse is like, I will I will throw down my fist and I will I will trample on all of the mutants. There are ants beneath my feet. You know, he's like super like theatrical and like big and vocal and like that's how it should have been played. And I think Oscar Isaac can do that. But whatever they were doing with the script and the story and the writing and whatever, I think the director failed to create the apocalypse that the fans were wanting. And so, um, but not because Oscar Isaac wasn't good. And I think he could do really well behind the mask. Matthew Good is the other pick. <clears throat> and I, I don't know, dude. I don't see what you're seeing with him in the role of Victor Von Doom. I like Oscar Isaac for this one. I'm picking Oscar. Eddie Gathegi, if I'm saying that correctly, from Twilight and X-Men First Class, he played Darwin, uh, who was the only guy who was supposed to be able to survive literally anything, and then he was the only guy who really died. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what happened there. But, um, yeah, you could re you could recycle him as Norn Rad. That, that could work. Um, the other guy is Lakeith Stanfield. I think that, that also could work. I don't know, though. Uh, that's tough. Probably Lakeith. I think I'm going Lakeith. And then after that, we have 
Galactus, Hugh Keys Burn, if I'm saying that correctly, Mad Max Fury Road, and the original Mad Max, and then also Ed Harris, Westworld and National Treasure Book of Secrets. Between the two of these guys, even though Hugh Keys Burn's voice is really cool, I'm gonna go with Ed Harris. Um, I like him more. I've seen him more, and um, he also has a good voice. I think he would be great. So let's read them off. Patrick Wilson, Blake Lively, Liam James, David Denman, Brian T, Oscar Isaac, Eddie Gathegi, and Hugh Keys Byrne. After that, we have Matthew McConaughey, Chantel Van Santen, Dylan Playfair, Joel Egerton, Yu G. Tai, Matthew Good, Lakeith Stanfield, and Ed Harris. Um, I think I'm gonna have to go with team two. Van Santen, Playfair, Egerton, um, Stanfield over at Eddie, and then Ed Harris and McConaughey. I, I really like that lineup. So yeah, that's where I'm going. And now we come towards the end. So before we close out, um, I'm gonna show you guys my my castings, my picks. I did some art for these as well. Um, so you can feel free to enjoy that. But the stuff of legend, I have my Instagram for those of you guys who are watching on YouTube. You can check that out if you wish, but you don't have to. I make this content here for you and I hang out there on Instagram. These guys on Instagram are super legends. They're awesome. And I'm super grateful that they have all come out to participate in this and show you guys the creative minds that they have to try to get some really good talent into the MCU. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my picks. I've already talked about them a little bit, but I'm gonna show you now. And maybe you'll see what I see. So here's a fun one. I, I genuinely have been saying this since I saw Parks and Rec the very first time. Rob Lowe, to me, is already playing Reed Richards. The way that the Reed Richards is to me is that eccentric, kind of high energy, kind of like fast thinking, fast talking, but like bubbly, good intended person that Rob Lowe plays on Parks and Rec. Um, and Patrick Dempsey plays a doctor. Uh, in Grey's Anatomy, he's also in Transformers Dark of the Moon. He is totally, like they both to me look like uh, Reed Richards. And to me, they both already have played roles that are completely compatible with Reed Richards. Um, so I, I, I want that, I want that very much. So let me know if you guys like these down below, okay? So next up we have Elizabeth Banks, Brightburn, Lego Movie 2, Power Rangers 2017, um, and then Adrienne Palicki. She's also one of my favorite TV actresses of all time. Um, the Orville and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, both are really good. Both are, have, are used to playing people that are like wives, girlfriends, um, but also like powerful women. And this is really important. You need to have that for Susan Storm. She holds the team together. She holds the family together. She's the heart and the soul of the Fantastic Four. And um, you gotta have someone that's got great acting chops and both of these ladies are A-list. So I, I think both of these are great. Let me know who you like better down below. Um, next up we have Johnny Storm the Human Torch. We have Zac Efron from The Greatest Showman in Baywatch. Um, he's literally perfect for this role in my opinion. Um, I would love to see him in it. And then Jamie Bell, he was in Fant Four Stick. He was the guy that played The Thing in that movie, which was a horrible miscast. He's a great actor. He would be perfect playing the Human Torch. I don't know why he was ever cast to play Ben Grimm. He should not have been cast to play Ben Grimm. And it's not even like Ben Grimm was bad. It's just that how much better could he be playing a role he actually seems fit for? He's not a big guy. He should be, and like, it doesn't make sense that he's the muscle when Reed Richards is literally bigger than him. You know what I mean? It's like, he should be uh, the Human Torch. So put him in that role. Recycle that Fox actor, Marvel. <laughs> Get keep that trend going where you recycle Fantastic Four actors and fan fat and uh, and put them in the MCU. Do that. Do that again. Let me know who you like. So also David Denman from The Office and Power Rangers 2017, and then Kevin Durant from Lost and X Men Origins Wolverine, where he played Blob. Both of these guys have really piercing blue eyes. Now I didn't augment their eyes here. I just I what I did was I put a filter over it to make them orange, <laughs> really lazy, and then deleted where their eyes are. So you could see what you're gonna be seeing when you see an orange giant wall of, of stone and those vibrant blue eyes. These two actors have those eyes and they both are perfect for that role. Other people have seen that too. You've already seen those castings. So let me know which one you guys like better. My pick is David Denman. 
So here we go. So Ta Namor the Submariner, I've been thinking of for a very, very long time. Tyler Hoechlin is actually perfect for this role, and so is Zachary Quinto. Both of them are great. Teen Wolf, Supergirl, um, he's being wasted. I said this already, he's been wasted on Supergirl. Um, Superman is much more than a jobber to just prop up Supergirl. So get the heck out of DC right now, Tyler Hoechlin, and come over to Marvel where they'll treat you right and get you your own franchise as a villain, uh, anti-hero really. And then Zachary Quinto, Star Trek Beyond, and American Horror Story, I already said, when I, as soon as I saw him as Spock, I was like, dude, that's Namor. And so I've been waiting for this opportunity. He is Namor. I can't wait to see him do that. Let me know which one you guys think looks best. All right, now we're into some fun stuff. Victor Von Doom. So my top choices are Michael Fassbender and Viggo Mortensen. So I personally think Fassbender is close enough to a lot of the actors I've picked in age. Not, not the same age, but he's close. And he could play um, Dr. Doom very, very well. I want someone that's gonna play a very powerful leader, a ruler of a nation. He is a scientist, he's a doctor, he's a sorcerer, he's gotta be into the dark arts, and then he's also gotta have a very troubled past, which we've already seen that um, that both these guys can do. And um, also, they have to be able to tell a story from behind a mask or under a hood. You know what I mean? Like they have to be able to work with their eyes, their body language, um, I all I altered the eyes for Vigo Mortensen uh, a little bit. I just boosted that, but with the um, with Fastbender, I did nothing. I just took the image. I like I, I grabbed the image off of the internet, and so I just put the mask there so you could see kind of what that's gonna entail, what it's gonna look like. They both can tell stories with their eyes. I think they're both great. Vigo's my top pick, but Fastbender's perfect for that as well. Next up for Silver Surfer, Sam Witwer is impossible to find a shaved head picture of that's decent or or where he's like showing off muscle at all this is an old picture from when he was on smallville so it's not recent um he's much more fit at this point in life but sam witwer smallville the clone wars he would be great he's my top pick uh, actually he's my second pick sorry he's my second top pick even though it's actor number one um i just, it just i forgot to put him on the right not and now he's on the left so uh, Ricky Whittle, The 100 and American Gods, is my top pick from The 100. Uh, without a doubt, he is the most perfect. Like physically, his fitness, his face, his head shape, his acting ability that he's displayed on The 100, everything falls in line with what you need to do to play uh, Silver Surfer. He's the guy. And so a close second is Sam Whitworth. So that's where that is. Next up, we have for Galactus, Ian McDermott, who played uh, <laughs> Lord Sheev, <laughs> he played uh, um, uh, Emperor Palpatine and uh, Senator Palpatine as well. And so uh, he would be amazing. And then also Jeremy Irons. Both of them kind of look very similar in their face and their mouth, nose kind of area. So if you're going to do like put their face in the Galactus mask, you could totally do that and get away with that. Um, and both of them have voices that are absolutely freaking legendary. I love either of these. Um, I, I would probably pick Ian McDermott, but not by much. Uh, Jeremy Irons is probably just, just as good. Literally coin toss. So, yeah, that's where I think that is. So, here's my lineup. Um, let me know what you guys think. Team 1, Rob Lowe, Elizabeth Banks, Zac Efron, David Denman, Tyler Hoechlin, Michael Fassbender, Sam Witwer, and Ian McDermott. Team two, Patrick Dempsey, Adrian Palicki, Jamie Bell, Kevin Durand, Zachary Quinto, Vigo Mortensen, Ricky Whittle, and Jeremy Irons. So that is my team one and team two for my Fantastic Four. I'm going with team one for my own self. <laughs> I did create the list. And, uh, but that's not important. I want to know what you guys have to say about that. So now we're getting into the end game. Yes, I used the word end game on purpose. So now we're looking at the final results. So we've made it. You guys have sat through all of this fan casting. Now we're getting down to the heart of what is happening with this video. Why did we watch this whole video? It's because we're trying to figure out who do the people want to play these roles? What, what is the actor? What are the one, two actors maybe that most people desire to play this role? Who is that most popular actor for the role? Let's find out here are the most wanted actors to play the MCU Fantastic Four. Let's see who wins. Boom! 
Most wanted, number one most wanted for the role of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic is John Krasinski winning by, he wins with eight votes. Eight votes he got for that role. That's amazing. And the art piece I did not do. This is by Boss Logic. I just took that off the internet. And then uh, next we have the runners up. We have Patrick Wilson, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Matthew McConaughey all tied for second with four votes each. This is, in, this is awesome. Super incredible. You can see that three out of the four picks here have major fan casting uh, like Photoshop's images already created. I did not make those images. I just grabbed those um, And so but look at that. This is your winner for Reed Richards Let me know if you guys like that or if you like if you prefer the runners-up or if there was someone else You thought was like really awesome that didn't make the cut um, But this is who is most wanted um, By by the vast majority of people. So let's go to the next slide the number one most wanted for, Emma, uh, for Susan Storm, Reed, uh, Reed Richards' wife, Invisible Woman, is Emily Blunt with nine votes. That is huge. She won with nine votes total. And the runners up are Catherine Winnick, Amelia Clark, Rachel McAdams, who is in the MCU, and Blake Lively, with each of them receiving four votes for the role. That's awesome. Like that's that's a lot. Like that's a lot of, of common denominators right there. So these these five actresses right here are the most wanted, with Emily Blunt being the most requested actress for the role. Next up for Johnny Storm the Human Torch, we have Dacre Montgomery winning with five votes, which is a slim margin. Five votes getting uh, for Dacre Montgomery. Uh, being the number one and I did the art for this one. So I actually I created this one I just found an image and, and I did some stuff and whatever. I, yeah, I made it anyway um, <laughs> Let me know if you guys like that. I think it's stupid that he's shirtless um, So uh, most wanted actor to play Johnny from the human torch five votes. That's pretty. That's pretty good pretty impressive Now let's see the runners-up. We have Zach Efron Sam Claflin and Ansel Elgort tied for second with three votes each coming in just two votes shy of the lead um, actor so that's pretty awesome I would have guessed if I could have that Sam Claflin or Ansel Elgort would have won that but apparently not most people want Dacre Montgomery for this role so next up David Harbour David Harbour wins the role of Ben Grimm the thing <clears throat> in the MCU by winning with nine votes that is a lot guys so he won with nine votes and let's see who the runners-up are David Denman and Joel Egerton, the next two of my favorites <laughs> for this role. So this is awesome. These are the top three guys that I wanted to play this role and they ended up making that list. That's so cool, that's incredible. And I did the art piece for this, but it's not much. I mean, you know, like I, I obviously didn't change a whole lot. I just kind of threw his, like, I did the skin for him or whatever, but let me know what you guys think. If, does this help you see him in the role? Does it help you visualize what it could possibly be? Obviously, it's not as cool as the art piece up there on the top right corner, um, which is super awesome. That one, if I'm not mistaken, was done by a one of the fan casters here. Let me see if I could pull that up. Do do do. Which one do you guys like the most? Honestly, like, do you guys um, do you guys think that David Denman should have won? Um, or do you guys think that like Joel Egerton, you know, could have had that? I honestly thought that uh, David Denman or Joel Egerton might have grabbed it, but I was really confident with David Harbour. Um, it was just really good. Let me see if I can. Yeah, so World of Fancast is the guy who created that image for the thing. So great job with that. It really helps because he actually used David Denman's eyes, um, which is awesome. And so, uh, yeah, sorry, my phone just beeped off or whatever. So anyway, thank you guys for looking at that one. Let me know what you think. So here's one by Boss Logic, but Brian T wins. This is so massive. He wins with 11 votes. So 11 people wanted Brian T to play Namor the Submariner. This is massive. That's based. That's almost half of the people um, that were in this summit wanted Brian T. That's a lot of votes, guys. And. Uh, this is an art piece by Boss Logic. I just did the sides. I did the side pieces, and then um, and just filled it in. But let's take a look. Another piece by Boss Logic um, is Luke Evans as Namor, which also looks freaking amazing. And he came in one vote under, ten votes for for um, Luke Evans. 
So 11 votes, one vote difference, one more vote for Brian T. Most people want Brian T, but very close want, want Luke Evans. That's, that's a really tight margin, guys. And the fact that Boss Logic did the art for both of those shows that a lot of these guys, a lot of us, me and everybody here, we look to people like Boss Logic and they kind of set these trends out there, throwing out these ideas. And fan casting is something that's fun that we all take part in, including Boss Logic, even though he's not really a fan caster, he does fan cast clearly. And so um, we were all influenced by being able to visually see what is going on here with Namor and then also, I mean, sorry, with Brian T and then also with Luke Evans. So um, yeah, it's great. Now let's go to the next one. Next up, Dr. Doom. Number one most wanted from Dr. Doom is Michael Fassbender with six votes to play Victor Von Doom. I did the art for this one. Um, I'm actually really proud of this one. Uh, let me know if you guys think, now if you guys think why does he look all weird, it's because Dr. Doom burned his face with that mask to get it on. He, you know, to, to cover his, uh, his, his mask, it, it destroyed his face basically, almost, almost to the point that he almost kind of looks like Deadpool, like it's pretty rough. He never takes the mask off. And so uh, I did the art for this one. I cut the mask in half so you guys could see what I was gonna kind of go with. I want it to be very comic book accurate, you know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, wearing the green, the cow, and put Dr. Doom in the background. I wanna show you guys who the runners up are. Joaquin Phoenix and Adam Driver, each with five votes. So one vote shy of Michael Fassbender. Both of those actors got nominated five times each. That's really good, guys. A lot of people, there's a good even spread here. A lot of people want Fassbender, a lot of people want Joaquin Phoenix, and a lot of people want Adam Driver. Really good stuff. I'm really proud of like of this list. It's really cool. And it's also educational because I would never have guessed that people wanted Adam Driver to play Doctor Doom. You know, there's been a lot of like, uh, you know, negative talk about Kylo Ren or like people, some people didn't like him in, in uh, Star Wars. Some people just don't like the writing, but people like the actors, you know, so it's like, I don't like The Last Jedi, but I still like the actors who are in it. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not anything on them. So I'm really glad to see that people are still giving love to people like Adam Driver and then Joaquin Phoenix coming up, uh, up, coming up with um, Joker 2019. It's gonna be really interesting to see how he plays that. So next up, most wanted for uh, Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer is a tie. So we tied Ricky Whittle on the left. So this one here is Ricky Whittle. And then on the right over there with the surfboard is Keanu Reeves. And so six votes each they got. That's that's pretty good. And you'll be shocked to know that there's actually a few uh, ties as well. So with the runners up, we have James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender again, and Sam Witwer all tied for second with three votes each. So six votes each for Ricky Whittle, six votes for Keanu, and three for James McAvoy, three for Michael Fassbender, three for Sam Witwer. Really, really cool. And I did, a, I did the art again for this one as well. Um, yeah, and so I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. So, uh, and it takes a long time to make these dang videos, dude. Prepping all these slides. It's a lot of, but it's so much fun. I'm really, I'm really excited that we get to hang out like this and fan cast. So uh, share this with a friend. Next up, we have the winner to play Galactus, the devourer of worlds. The most wanted actor is Liam Neeson with six votes to play the role of the devourer of worlds. And I did the art for this one. Um, and uh, the next runners up are James Earl Jones, Keith David, and John Noble with three votes each. I was surprised to find out that um, Ian McDermott wasn't on the winning list. He had two votes. And uh, I was really sad by that. <laughs> I really wanted Ian McDermott for this. And obviously, I don't have the safe, I don't have the determining factor say, right? I'm not Marvel, I'm not Disney, I'm not gonna hire anybody. But this gives you an idea of how many people are thinking certain things. And let me know in the comments if any of these videos changed your mind about certain actors or if you weren't aware that someone should or could possibly play one of those roles. Um, but I really like this. You can obviously see Galactus, um, you know, with I put Liam Neeson's face behind Galactus's mask. I did the same thing for John Noble. Um, it looked kind of like different and funny for uh, Keith David and James uh, Earl Jones. It just didn't, it didn't look like Galactus. So 
I didn't do it. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, Keith David's a, a strong vocal actor. So is James Earl Jones. And so uh, being vocal actors, they probably wouldn't want to do a whole lot on screen anyway. So next up, let me show you the final results. The final results, the whole roster of the most wanted actors for the Fantastic Four in the MCU are John Krasinski, art by Boss Logic. Invisible Woman, Emily Blunt, art by Boss Logic. Human Torch, Dave from Montgomery, art by myself, uh, the stuff of Legend Show. Uh, the Thing, David Harbour, uh, my art. Namor, Brian T, Boss Logic. Um, Doctor Doom, Michael Fassbender, my art. Silver Surfer, Ricky Whittle and Keanu Reeves, mine. Ricky Whittle's on the left, Keanu Reeves is on the right. And Galactus, uh, Liam Neeson, I did the art for that. And this is your final roster of all of the most wanted actors for the Fantastic Four's MCU roster. This is so cool, so much fun. I hope that we get this roster. If we got this roster, exactly. Imagine that, a movie, several movies with these actors in this role, right? And obviously you pick one or the other for the Silver Surfer, but seriously. This roster, I could sleep with. I could be like, dude, we got an awesome cast. We got a great cast. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. Get a good director, get a good script, and it's gonna be gold. If they announce these guys for those roles, I am stoked out of my mind. So anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Maybe you guys feel differently than I do. But this, my friends, has been the Fan Casting Summit number two. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before we go, I wanted to make sure that we get a huge thank you to everybody involved. Nerds United, World of Fancasts, Fancasts Forever, Fancast Power, Dream Fancast, Fancasting is Dope, Just Another Fancast Account, uh, Comic Movies Remade, Mr. Funcaster, Correct Ranking Fancasts, uh, Devil of Fancasts, Fancast World, Jack's Fancasts, Connor's Fancast, Fancasting 10, Fancast Frenzy, Fancaster underscore 76, Agent Fancast, Comic Man Jake, Use Air Fancaster 18, James the Butte Castiglione, uh, Dr. Fancast, Dave, uh, Daft Detective, Reimagine Fancast, Fancast Force, Fancasting Central. Follow these guys on Instagram. If you guys don't already, these guys are amazing. They're constantly uploading. I follow all of these guys. I follow them. I, I check out their fan casting. They inspire me to make videos. They inspire me to talk about the news. They inspire me to just geek out about movies and TV and all of our favorite comic books and stuff. You guys check these guys out. And they all have something unique to bring to the table. Their own perspectives differ as you've just seen in this video. And you might relate to like 10 of these guys in a way that maybe you didn't realize you could. Or like you appreciate certain actors the same way that they do. And maybe they, they chose your favorite actor for a role that maybe I didn't. Go check these guys out. Follow them on Instagram. They're awesome. Thank you guys all so much for coming out and being a part of the Fan Casting Summit, the greatest, biggest fan casting event ever in history. There's never been a fan casting event as big as this, and I'm I'm anticipating that if this continues to grow, it'll continue to just get better and better and better. So remember, next time, bring some popcorn, get cozy on a couch, um, or maybe just listen to this on your way into work or something. I don't know, um, like with your earphones or something. But uh, thank you. Check me out as well at the Stuff of Legend show on Instagram. Um, I do not specifically fan casting. I do a lot of that here. I want to promote these guys. They're so great and they're so friendly and they're so wonderful to communicate with and geek out with in the comments. And some of these guys hang out in the DM as well. So it's just a good time. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you guys. I wanted to just close out by saying if you like this video, give it a like. If you love it, please share it with someone you know that you think is going to enjoy this video. You have a ton of nerd friends. I know you've got them and you know who they are. Make sure to share that. And uh, also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. I do a lot of live hangouts and we can talk about things like this. If you ask me these questions, present an idea, I'll have no problem deviating from the topic a little bit to talk about something that you wanna talk about in the live. So just do that, turn on notifications and be part of the live chats. So then also, um, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who took participation in this Fan Casting Summit event. If you guys want to be participating in the next Fan Casting Summit event, make sure to email me at the stuff of legend show at gmail.com. And that way you can request participation in the Fan Casting Summit. Okay? And so we're going to be doing that um, probably if I can, if I can keep up with this every single month. 
And um, if not, it'll be every other month. I'm going to do my best. It's a huge undertaking to do by myself. But I appreciate everyone who was involved submitting their tributes and submitting their votes, casting their votes. We now have a good idea of what the general population is going to want for these for these roles. These guys are constantly talking about casting and they have a good eye on the ground, eye in the sky and an ear on the ground for what people want in fan casting. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.